Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Blades Again with. Uh, we appreciate you uh, jumping in and uh, watching us as we begin our first uh, first level adventure, One Who Watches From Below by uh, uh, the amazing Joe Bittman. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and start. we got a special guest today. Um, uh, Will, tell him who you are. Hey, I'm Will. Uh, easy enough. <laughs> Will is a Will is a recent uh, tra like uh, transplant to Colorado. Yeah, he was very with my home group. Really, it was just me, and Will, and uh, we would get together in game. Except it would mostly be eating lunch at the Thai place. The Thai so, place. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That was like our campaign for a while there. Hmm. So without further ado, um, let's uh, talk. So uh, last last we left off, um, uh, you intrepid heroes were able to uh, overcome. Uh, Glorflagrader, and um, and in, in doing so, saved the world. Everyone got um, some fame and some notoriety. Um, this did not result in any of you uh, becoming the king of the Nine Town era. era area. Actually, it's still very much in dispute. Um, but uh, uh, Duke uh, Featherstone did go ahead and uh, give you all a little bit of a starting cash to go ahead and uh, uh, give your. Um, uh, to get a little bit of equipment, and uh, yeah, now you know you guys can get up heads up in nine towns, even those of you who have two of them, and um, uh, you've got um, uh, uh, the what I'm trying to say, uh, you know, people people know you know you guys have got a little bit of notoriety on top of everything. so um in the interim uh, since since the last time some of you guys have uh, powered up so um you had the opportunity to go ahead and. Um, uh, Reach out to your patron. So, um, uh, let's start with uh, Wigs. Who's your character's patron? I'm frozen, aren't I? A little bit. Yeah. Um, I guess another thing that you might try is maybe turning off the virtual background. That possibly could help a little bit. I've noticed that sometimes with other people I've played with. Everyone, welcome to my basement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I look much less cosmic. Right? Maybe your dog would help tune it in, like bunny ears. Yeah, sure, sure, bring her down to, to let her, you know. Yeah, let Bobby I mean, come down. It was working pretty well when she was down there. You know, there was, uh, there's nowhere for, like, the, the, the part of the problem is I've got all concrete floors down here, so there's nowhere for her to lay down. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, upstairs I have, actually, her, her one of her beds is in my office, so <laughs> she, can, she, she and all the cats can all hang out. <laughs> Jeff, your Jeff is your. Haha, -ha. I was saying that maybe your internet's having a hard time uh, taking in all that glorious facial hair as well. So maybe you should go shave real quick, and that might help as well. Yeah, yeah. never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. <laughs> I look like I, when I shave it off, I look like the world's biggest eleven-year-old. <laughs> uh, I don't need that. Y'all don't want it. I promise you. I look bizarre. Also, my wife with me. Okay, so um, you guys are gonna go ahead. And, um, let's do some. Uh, let's do some. Uh, let's let's talk about patrons. Um, Wigs, uh, who is your character reaching out to to be their uh, magical patron? Um, I actually didn't pick one, but I have a full library of folklore. Uno momento, por favor. All righty. All right, <laughs> we're gonna do some Bible dipping from the Golden Bough. Uh, Archigallus. The horror movie, y'all. This is the beginning of the horror movie. Okay, let's just roll it. See how it goes. Okay. Uh, twelve. Uh, per judge. Per judge. Yeah. Oh, I've got the judge table pulled up. Um, a 12, that's the minimum um, result. And it says the caster makes contact with his patron and successfully negotiates the terms of the compact. Uh, he learns the spell invoke patron as it relates to his patron, but may only cast it once per week. Ooh. Each time the caster casts invoke patron, he is indebted to, to his patron who will call in the debt at some point. 
The caster's patron marks him as a servant via an inconspicuous brand or symbol somewhere on the caster's body. And you can raise that by spending luck. Yeah. If you want to. But is it funny or not to? <laughs> um, my, my house rule is that you can roll again for um, patron bond when you level up. Um, so if you want to uh, just leave it where it is now, and it will be funny, I promise you. OK, as week, long as it's funny, I'm good with it. I think so. Okay. All right, so. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, so um, who is your patron from the Golden Bow? Do we have a name? Uh, or... Archigallus. <clears throat> uh, something about blood priesthood. Archigallus. <laughs> 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 like it. It, yeah, it works. I like it. All right, gotcha. Okay, so um, uh, okay, so uh, Jeff, how about your characters? What are they gonna um? I uh, I heard a little bit downtown. Why don't you explain to our viewers what you're going to go for as far as patrons? Sure. So uh, Freethia the Spirit and Queen Munali are our two-headed elf here, and they are both going to have their own patron. Uh, Freethia the Spirit will be bonding with the queen with the king of Elfland, and that is because she is a true elf. She was born into her elf elfiness, uh, whereas uh, her sister. Uh, Queen Moon Ali, her head only sprouted at, during our last adventure, uh, so she will be bonding with uh, Hecken, Hecken Hoda, Duke of Deformities. I love it. All right, free feel. Let's roll for King of Elfland first. Perfect. So I'm also doing some spell burning, um, yeah. and I'm going to be getting a plus six on my roll uh, for King of Elfland. I rolled a nine, but that, let's see. So that's gonna give me a plus one for level is 10, plus six for my spell burn is a 16. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spend two luck to get that up to 18. Okay, okay. And the caster uh, makes contact with his patron and is granted a mark of favor. Um, she receives a prominent mark of the patron on her face. The patron learns the spell invoke patron as it relates to the patron, may cast it once per day with a plus one bonus. Um, yep, so that's basically the gist with King of Elfland. Once a day okay. with a plus one. And what does the Lord of Formities have to say about this? Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm spending seven for spell burn with the Lord of Deformities. Um, and so it's gonna give me a total of a plus eight. And I rolled an 11, so that's a 19. I'm gonna spend one more luck to get that up to a 20. Cool. And for, um, so we've got an 18 and a 20. Let me make a note of those. 18, 20. Okay, so now with the 20, um, let's see. So Queen Moon Ali um, also has a prominent mark on her face of her patron. Um, she learns the spell once a day with a plus one. Um, wait, how is this different than the last one? You also get a set of steak knives from the. Uh, yeah, I, I I really can't tell what the difference is. Um, the only thing I can tell is the 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 first sentence says, in the one below, um, that I make contact and I'm granted a mark of favor, and in this one it says I make an ag an agreeable arrangement with my patron. So I, I don't hey. know what the difference between those two things are. So actually, oh. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend that one point of luck. Actually, I'm gonna keep it where it was. So I have an 18 and a 19. Okay. Cool. Rival patrons working for both of y'all. All right, so um, yeah, you know, uh, you also haven't been able to buy a drink since you've gotten back. For the most part, people think you guys are fantastic, and you've been getting nothing but, um, you know, uh, you know, you, you know, lauds, and people are like, oh, you're the ones who, you know, we, we, we you know, because to them, all of a sudden, the weather turned bad, and like, you know, it got, you know, crazy and such, and then suddenly, you know, the uh, the, you guys were able to like, you know, correct that and destroy the demon. The word has gotten around um, from uh, Lord Featherstone. So um, uh, at this point, um, yeah, so uh, we find ourselves one night. Um, you guys are there at like one of the uh, inns in Nightown, a bunch of you. Um, you have just met your new buddy, um, Brank Ironfist, who was actually, um, Brank was a, uh, you were like a, like a enforcer for Lord Featherstone. 
Um, and uh, when all this happened, he decided to send you along with the um, with his group. They don't know it, but you're secretly to keep an eye on them and report back if they do anything uh, sedacious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't know that. Yeah, nice. So um, you guys are sitting there kind of trying, trying to figure out what your next move is when uh, this old fellow with a beard kind of wanders over and he's like, hey, hey, hey. He's clearly very drunk. He's like, you think you're all something? You did something great? You, you fought whatever? <laughs> you guys are babies. You're just starting off. You haven't seen anything yet. I've seen some crap, okay? All right. I have been to the Cave of Secrets. I had my dreams answered. I saw into the universe. So don't act like what you guys did was all so fire and special, okay? Cave of Secrets, that was something. I saw something. I was in connection with the cosmic everything. Are there are no rules to this Cave of Secrets thing. You seem to be talking about it pretty freely. Oh, yeah, you think a Cave of Secrets would be secret, eh? You know what? I'm not, it's not my secret to keep. I'm proud of what I did there. I laid my money down like I was supposed to. I went ahead and paid their price. I dreamt all the dreams and I saw everything. And it gave me the power, you know, gave me immortality. Wave over uh, one of the, the bar keeps. Uh, <clears throat> I'll have one of whatever he's drinking. <laughs> so tell us about your immortality. Does this also mean that you are invulnerable to damage? No, it means that when I die, I'm going to go ahead and there be alongside all of the grave of the mortals in the next plane. I saw into it. I saw they had a circle of thrones there. And I have a spot sit amongst them for when it all starts. I am going to join them there at the Cave of Secrets. And then like, what's keeping you here? It's not my time yet. Something will either kill me or I'll die, and then I'll go and be with them. But it won't matter because I've got immortality because I've been to the cave. I paid my thousand gold pieces. Everybody who goes there pays. You know, I don't think immortality is a license to be obnoxious. Was this game of you gave them a thousand gold pieces? Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. That's probably the best license to be obnoxious. So who did you pay this thousand gold pieces to? To the keepers of the Cave of Secrets. The keepers. Look. Tell us more about the keepers. Oh, they you you tell them what you're looking for, and then they then you lay down and you breathe in the amazing fumes in that place, and then you dream, and those dreams give you a glimpse of the absolute what's really going on in the cosmos. Oh, it was it was extraordinarily astounding. There were three of us. We each brought a thousand gold pieces and gems and coins and whatnot and gave it to them. Best money I ever spent in my whole life. Everything was worth it because of that. Because now I know I'm forever. Forever and ever I live. So congratulations, you killed a demon. One day demons will be bowing and scraping to me. So I'll like he kind of bumps in Anatol and like kind of like like lands all, like he's like hanging on Anatol. He's like kind of hanging on you like and then when it's all over, maybe you'll be bowing and scraping to me too. I, I doubt that, but my friends, there's a lot of gold in this cave. This is reason enough for us to go. <laughs> I could think of 3,000 reasons. <laughs> also, how did you and your friends come upon a thousand gold pieces each? Oh, are you kidding me? I was an adventurer like you. I was a real thing. Okay, back in the age, the real age of heroics, which was over before any of you were born, except for you, Master and Mistress Elves, and your two-headed elf sets. Um, no, you, you weren't <laughs> pointing over at Queen Moonalay. Before you were born, though, certainly the, the heroic time ended before then. And, and back then, we would go on adventures all of the time and have these amazing things happen. And we thought, I, I helped kill a, maybe not a dragon, but a great big lizard. We got a lot of money for that. I will also say, speaking of immortality, although this head has only been attached to this body for a few weeks now, I have been around far longer than you can even comprehend. Mm. <laughs> and he's like, look, he looks over at um, Queen Moonalay. He's like, I dreamt of you there. Uh, Queen Moonalay, is there any chance that you and I can just talk in private? Anything you have to say to me, my sister can listen. 
We keep no secrets from each other. All right, he goes into his cloak and he takes out this like scrap of paper and he kind of hands it over and he's like, I saw you, I saw you, queen, my queen in my dream. You should go back there, tell them that you also belong in mortality in the circle of immortals that will exist at the end of time. And he hands this, uh, this piece of paper over there to Freethium, to uh, Queen Moodley actually, what he's for, obviously. Well, if you would like to see me sitting by your side in the throne room, perhaps you can also finance this venture. Oh no, see, now that I'm immortal, I gave all my money away. I don't need it anymore. And like, you see like the bartender's like, like rolls his eyes like, yeah, right, you know. It's like, cause I don't, I don't have to have it. Uh, mortal gold and, and, and money and things, I've given it away. It, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be immortal. Who's paying also, for your drinks? I, just uh they open you can't i, I don't he's like, let me tell you something okay castro does not buy drinks in nine towns okay castro has drinks given to him in nine towns okay you know queen moon lazy you're the one who i really appreciate here i'll leave the rest of you out of this but you should you should go to the cave and um and go see it i gotta uh, to have with you wait <laughs> Before you leave, uh, I have one question for you. Uh -huh. Was immortality what you asked the keepers to show you, or was it something else? No. I asked to see my destiny and my life's purpose. And I was meant to grow old here and die and then go on to live forever amongst a circle of immortals. It wasn't what I asked for. This is a terrible burden. Terrible. It's, 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 it's charted my whole life out and took away my free will, but I just wanted to be rich, but now I can't be. It just goes through my fingers. It just goes through my fingers. And then he, he walks off by himself, just ranting to himself for a while, like, you know, and, and then eventually he, you know, you know, somehow kipes another drink and then takes it outside. Maybe we should go check this out because that guy's bar stories are pretty good. I'd like to have something like that in my back pocket. Yes. Sounds like a cursed cave that should... Uh, something bad is happening there. It took that man's sanity. And... Uh... <laughs> well, like, how do we know? Maybe he was always like that. Well, he had to be a little insane to begin with to fork over a thousand gold pieces. Right. Which is good for us, though. So I'll gather my gear. And I do think we should go and at least plunder this place. I don't, I don't want to get caught up in any schemes, you know, seeing the future and things like that. But I think my future says uh, an equal share of 3,000 gold pieces for all of us. I like and that. Well, I'm not surprised that this man says he dreamt of me. Many mortals do dream of me. I am still intrigued by this cave, nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so um, we get it together and head in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Brendan, quick question. I'm assuming that there has been no time that has passed since my spell burning and us going on this venture. Is that is that assumption correct? Um. Yes, but the um, we're gonna go ahead and say that in the uh, two weeks you guys had to travel overland to get to this place, that all spell burn is forgiven. Also, we don't have any encounters outside. It's the weirdest thing. It's like deathly quiet out there. Almost like everyone's staying indoors. Which is actually <laughs> a bad sign. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, but yeah, but after, uh, after two weeks of uh, hiking and making your way through, um, you actually come, uh, like, you know, the, 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 the hills at the base of the mountains look just like you, uh, you know, just like he drew them, kind of. It's, you know, he, for, you know, for being a doddering old drunk, he drew a really good map that got you here. And um, literally outside of, a, you, you see there's a cave entrance there and outside of it, you actually see, um, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, you see a sign, there's literally like a, a, a stump out there with a hanging sign on it that says enter. And uh, there's a dark passageway just beyond that. This, this can't be that easy. Um, Does it say um, cave of secrets? There on the sign? <laughs> no, just, just, just says enter. In what language? 
Uh, it says enter in the common tongue. Out loud. So as Freethia, Queen Moon Ali, and Wiggs peer into the cave with their infravision, do they see any heat signatures in the darkness? Um, no, not initially. No, not from not from the outside. Do I smell gold? Okay, you spend some time concentrating, and like, here's the thing. Okay, it's like far off, but intense. Oh, there's gold in there. I can smell it. I want to ask uh, my my hand about this cave. If uh, the, the demon face has ever heard of it or seen it, I'll even show it to him if he needs to have a visual cue. Sure. What is your character's luck score? Uh, right now it's 12. It like looks up at you and it says... Uh... Oh yes, I know all the secrets of this place. All the secrets. I, I can't back, I can't Every back secret that up. No. of the cave of secrets. He says, "I can't back that up." No, there's something here that's preventing my power from seeing within. Normally, I can perceive through all worlds, but something there is is holding me off. Maybe we should uh, not go in, boss. What do you think? I mean, I kind of already staked my reputation on doing this adventure with the, everyone else. We looked kind of right. dumb if I don't That's, do it. Just leave me outside. It's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll bury my hand in my pocket. Well, I'll have be you, safe uh, in there. If you want, I'll, I'll go in first. Okay, so um, uh, as you guys go in, like the, the um, cavern, it goes in about uh, 40 feet and then it widens out. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, the, uh, the entrance pad passage uh, gradually widens into a large cavern. Light smoke hangs in the air, diffusing the light of the scores of candles placed around the chamber. The air has a thick richness to it, tart, sticky, sweet with floral undertones, and it makes you feel lightheaded. Through the smoky gloom, you can see body-length niches are carved in every wall. Um, there's a large obsidian obelisk standing at the room's center beside a small altar. What does this is... obelisk on the altar look like? Okay, so the obelisk. The royal we shall approach it. All right. Um, you walk up on yon obelisk. Do, 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 do. Sorry. Um, okay, so the. Um, um, okay, so the obelisk is one um, tall jet black stone. Um, it juts out of a hole in the floor from somewhere beneath, and there's a large baleful eye that's been carved um, onto one side. Is it on the side facing the entrance? Yes, it is facing, as you guys come in, this eye is facing you, and it's actually sort of like looking down on this, um, on the stone altar in front of it. And it's just carved, Brendan. There's not like a gem in it or anything, or no, just carved all the way up um, with that uh, eye set in there. Mm -hmm. um, as you look around, though, you see that there are two figures inside here. Um, there's two people, like so, in those like niches that are alongside of the wall. Um, you see two people in there that are uh, wrapped up in threadbare blankets. And uh, now that you're inside, you're you definitely sense heat coming off of one of them, not the other one. Is the eye on the um, on the obelisk? Is it kind of a hyper realistically carved one, or is it just kind of a crude shape of an eye in kind of a runic form? Um, I would call it stylized, um, you know, um, but not crude at all. Um, this is someone who deliberately made this thing that looks um, probably more intimidating than the average eye. And we don't see um, any doors immediately. Um, it's a, there, you see some passageways that are out of here. So the passage, this, this place is huge, okay? Um, you can go south as far as you can see, um, like, you know, it goes south into the darkness or north There's a passageway that leads out of here going to the north. We entered from the east or the west? You entered, you entered headed east. So you entered in from the east and um, made your way in. And um, yeah, you can kind of see down, like you can see like, like the, um, the, the roof of this place, um, it gets smaller towards the southern end, 
and it looks like there's another passageway there through the southern end. It's kind of far off. Uh, but then you definitely see a, uh, a, uh, a passageway leading north out of here. I'm going to start heading over to one of those uh, figures. If, you know, as these guys are scoping out the eye and looking around for the exits and stuff. Sure. Mm. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to roll here. You go up to the first one. Um, yeah, there is a... Um, uh, you see that there is a uh, human being wrapped up. He's got... Um, a super crazy long beard. His hair is kind of thin on top and sort of like falling out. He's laying there completely conked out and snoring quietly with his blanket, this, you know, crappy old blanket all the way wrapped around him. Is this the one that's giving off a heat signature or no? Yes, um, you see that um, Anatol has approached the one that's giving off the heat signature. Okay. It seems like he's- Careful, that's the live one. <laughs> Why the other one's not alive? Um, well, maybe alive, but room temperature. Uh, should I wake him? Should I try at least or leave him be? Perhaps we should let him slumber until we've determined what, what how it is we wish to pursue this. I'm just going to, you know, give a real close investigation, Brendan, as far as like, is he look mummified or he just look like he's like in a blanket? The, the dead one? No, the dude that I checked out first, the, uh. No, he just looks wrapped in a blanket. He's laying there. You can, you can actually see his chest rise and fall, and he's kind of snoring very, very quietly. All right. The two elves and the wizard, as they're standing in this room and they're feeling a little lightheaded and like we're getting in these like floral smells and the light smoke, are we recognizing any of these um, elements as uh, spell related? Uh at this point, uh, it all looks ritualistic to you, but you don't see anything that you recognize that you can tie into any of the spells that your characters know at this point. Okay. I would like to just cast Detect Evil. Oh, okay, go ahead and cast Detect Evil. Make that roll. Okay. There's my d20. So, that is a 18. So, 18 on Detect uh, Evil. To a range of 120 feet in all directions. Creatures of opposed alignment are automatically detected, so that would be chaos. Um, and objects inherently dangerous in nature, such as traps and cursed weapons. Um, evil creatures don't. Okay, so the uh, the sleeping guy seems to be um, opposite alignment of you. Um, he, he like registers, um, and then within 120 feet, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely sense danger and and uh, dark forces at present. It's almost a little bit overwhelming. Also, as soon as you finish casting that spell, the obelisk moves. And you hear this, like the sound of a grating stone, and the obelisk turns slightly until it's looking directly at you. Justicia challenges you, thing. (laughs) 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 Um, Yes, that seems quite unfortunate. Um, So it's looking at me. Yeah, it's looking directly at you. I mean, now mind you, the eye itself, it, the eye is not animated, mm-hmm. okay? But the obelisk has turned to where its gaze is upon you. The obelisk has turned toward me. Yes. Rethia is intrigued by all the things that are happening right now. And she's going to also do- join the detect, um, the detect gang, and she's going to do some detect mm-hmm. magic. Okay, go ahead, cast that spell. Where did my die go? Here it is. Okay, that is a 16. So I'm aware. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, r- real quick, uh, give me a percentage dice for your mercurial effect. Oh, I've already got mercurial for detect magic. There's no change. Unless, are we doing, are we doing a custom table? No, no, I'm going to use one out of the core book. Okay, yeah. Um, then th- this one already doesn't have any. When I, right. when I generated my sorcerer's grimoire, I had, I had it do the mercurial. Ma- okay. unless, you, unless, do you want to do them all on the fly? No, no. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with you having them having them already set. Oh, but actually, and I don't know if we want to retcon this. I forgot about that when it comes to patron bond. Um, I have the mercurial effect of memories of a dying god for mm-hmm. patron bond. <laughs> so I do, I have I cast that twice bond. now. Yeah, memories of a dying god. Casting the spell accesses the memories of a dying god. The caster must succeed on a DC 13 will save or be overcome by hallucinations of a bloody god war 
that lasts 1d3 rounds. If the caster succeeds on the will save with a natural 20, um, blah, 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 once dispelled. Oh, so, I mean, I guess it really only matters in terms of, yeah, like, when you actually, yeah. if this was, like, casting I, in I, combat. I, I guess not. All right. Um. Yeah. So yeah. At the to- you know, it, it definitely you know you know when you cast it, it definitely like you know threw you for a loop at the time. But that was a couple of weeks ago. You're good to go. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, what you got an 18 on your detect magic? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So um, this place, like, is this entire place like reeks of enchantment? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You see that? Uh, 18. Do, 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 do. Oh wait, no, I didn't get an 18. I think I got a 16. 16? Okay. Um, I think. Yeah, 30 foot range. Um, definitely that obelisk uh, radiates a uh, certain level of enchantment. And now, it, it, and while you're, while you're looking at it, it turns to look at you. And now the obelisk turns its, its uh, gaze upon yourself. Dun, dun, dun. I'd like to cast detect find a way out of this room. <laughs> this crazy obelisk thing. So I think we're gonna head to that south passage and just kind of like be near that that passageway in case uh, things go down and I need to make a run for it. I get you. So you kind of break off. The whole place is well lit with candles, but as you head down to the um, you know, uh, so the cave floor slopes gently downward and it widens out, and then you actually come to a precipice. Um, in front of the precipice, there is a railing, but it's kind of like cobbled together, just old planks and woods and, you know, pieces of junk. Um, over the side of it, you can look down uh, and to a deep, deep, deep pit. Um, there's a smell coming out of it. It's like, you know, bat guano and decay just kind of like comes out of that, uh, com- coming out of there. Every once in a while, you hear like the, uh, the, the shrieking of bats somewhere off in the distance. Well, now we know what the smell of incense was covering. <laughs> And it's a very fragrant dungeon so far. It's a lot, lot, of, lot, of, lot, of, lot of, It has a lot going on all factory wise. <laughs> As I'm looking, is it like just like go off into darkness at some point? Is it, do I get the sense of like expansive big chamber? Um, it looks so like you get to the edge here. Okay, so when you walk up, there's a railing, and just beyond that railing, you're looking over there is this pit. Um, the pit goes down in darkness absolutely as far as you can see. Okay. And uh, you kind of have this rank sense of, you know, smell of decay coming off of that. Um, but also, when you went that way, you saw that there's a way you can kind of like, um, there's a, another passageway that you didn't see before. It's off to the east. Uh, so you would head east, like you can head east and like kind of, um, like it goes east and then it looks like it turns north. Um, and you didn't see that until you actually went, made your way down there to the uh, precipice. So the spirit and the queen are going to walk around the um, obelisk and see if the eye moves with it, with her. The with eye them. continues to follow you as you walk around the obelisk. Okay. And it now it's no longer like, it seems to have like stopped looking at uh, Tia Martha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tia Martha uh, is going to draw her sword since... And it, since that is also her holy symbol uh, as a cleric of Decesia, and she's going to um, join Anatol as he's approaching the chaotic person as she doesn't necessarily believe that all chaotic creatures are bad, but you never yeah. really know. She's going to be ready to back him up if necessary. Yeah, so Anatol, you're hanging over this guy and um, uh, Tia Martha comes up to stand next to you. And uh, yeah, they're, they're just laying there like asleep. <laughs> Uh, a friend did say that he came here to sleep and to dream. Um, I gather that he would already have paid his entrance fee, but just to be sure, I'm going to just give him a little pat, you know, <clears throat> and see if he's got right, anything. He kind of wakes up. And he, he looks at you with his eyes kind of focusing, like, and he stands up and kind of dusts himself off and shakes his blanket off. And uh, he says, and he, he, he just sort of like, you know, um, uh, Looks over at all of you, just like looks around. Huh. Are you one oh. of the dreamers? Are you one? Are you a pilgrim who have come here to have a dream? Mm. We wanted. We wanted to, s- to gauge uh, the uh, the veracity of a story that we heard before we committed. And have you seen enough to gauge its veracity? I mean, we, the moving obelisk is impressive, but other than that, no, a sleeping man and perhaps a dead one. 
And for all we know, there's somebody who's beneath the obelisk just moving it himself. <laughs> and do you think it's likely that I have a man down there to impress you with a moving obelisk? I think if you're asking people for a thousand gold pieces a head, I think a lot of people would do a lot to impress them. And the secrets to all of the universe. Is that not worth gold? Um, I'd like to investigate the bottom of the obelisk. I'm looking for a secret door. Sure. Okay. Um, give me a, give me a check. Something. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead and uh, give me a check. Roll um, a uh, d20 and add your intelligence modifier and your elf level, which is one. May I ask why you're sleeping in a room with a dead man? Nine. Uh, nine. <laughs> you cannot find a secret door there at the obelisk, but you can definitely see that, like the, um, uh, like it, it's like there's a. I'm, I'm sure, but it's like like a little collar around the outside of it that prevents you from actually like seeing down to what's below it. Um, it, it seems like it's sort of built into the obelisk and unable to move. You kind of give it a good a good shake on there and it does not uh, seem to do anything. Okay. He says, uh, some dream to death in this place. Should that not be every man's right? And you wish to slumber by his moldering corpse? And you fear death. Is that what I'm hearing from you? I didn't say I fear death. I just prefer not to sleep next to, the, to those who are decaying. I see, I see. So many questions. Perhaps you've come here to pay the price and to the Dreaming Lord and to, to uh, hear the whispers of the one. I've already watches. been told that I'm destined to sit on a throne on the other side of time. So I don't believe that I need to pay your entrance fee. And yet you come. One wonders then why you have. Have you judged what you needed to judge? Have you seen this place for what it is? Do you now feel yourself? People come here to slumber and to dream, and I hear that they dream of me, and here I am. <laughs> ah, so are you a dream then that is walking to this place? That would be a first. I am. I'm what a dream you? come to life. Mm -hmm. And what are your names? Oh, I am too. Queen Munali. I and see. this is Frithia, the spirit. I see. And do we reside in your kingdom, oh, my queen? You do now. And what is your name, mortal? Uh, would you not call me Waitling? Waitling? Waitling. I shall call you Waitling. And wait, Link, may you ask your eye to cease its gaze upon my, my countenance? Oh, I may ask, but would I receive an answer? Would I, with my commands, be obeyed? I think not. Oh, no, you, you have come here and you have attracted the attention. And now he kind of looks directly over at Tia Martha at the one who watches from below. Always his eyes upon you from now on. He can see your soul. There's no way you can go in this world where you will not see his gaze. And he, when he gets him close to you, you guys just see for a moment there, you see like in, in his eyes, you see the sort of black squiggly sort of like darkness in there. Just for a moment, passing through his eyesight, his eyes. Mm -hmm. Reminds you of the vision you had after you slew uh, Gorfla Greater. Well, to be... Totally honest, Waitley. Not only did we come here to kind of investigate and to, like, again, to prove the tales that we've heard, but learning the secrets of the Cave of Secrets and perhaps filling our own pockets is probably part of the. So maybe you should tell us what the gold is hidden. You see that there are six of us and there's one of you. And you think that you should leave here with gold in your pockets? You believe that you can leave this place? Unaltered? Alive? Well, that was the hope. Uh, yes, because the, the goddess just is here with us. Yes, and we're not a bunch of rubes who are going to pay you a thousand gold pieces to take a nap on your floor. Mm -hmm. 
And right now, um, Queen Moon Ali and Freethi the Spirit are kind of whispering to each other quite sharply. Uh, and right now, Queen Moon Ali is really offended that he said six people and not seven. And Freethia is trying to like uh, calm her down. He forgot to cut himself. <laughs> cool. Yeah, he he should have done a headcount, and we could have avoided all of them. Um, I am just to be absolutely sure. I am going to go down and check the guy that we think is dead, just to be sure if he's dead. Okay, so here is what happens. You roll buddy over, okay? Um, mm -hmm. The uh, uh, fellow down there, and um, it's definitely an elf. They are definitely dead. Um, a uh, recently, just you know, um, deceased elven female. And uh, when you, uh, yeah, you roll her over, she's clearly died recently. You know, maybe like she hasn't started to like really major decay yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, that's a I uh, make a sign of blessing over her, you know. Respectfully, not knowing what you know, what God she followed, and you know, turn to uh, Frithia and Queen Moonali and Wigs, and like, well, I'm not sure what your traditions are. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Frithia, the spirit, steps forward and sets a sprig of mistletoe onto the uh, chest of the recently um, fallen elf, and uh, wishes her the um, the best of luck on her journey through Elfland. And Wig steps forward and begins draining her blood to offer it up to their god, Archigallus. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> it's a very fancy bowl. Rethia, the spirit, and Queen Munale take no issue with this. Uh, awesome. All right, yeah. So uh, you, you drain some of their blood ritualistically um, in order to... Uh... <laughs> we are going to have ourselves a little bit of a religious thing here. And I love it. I'll, you know, Kids, the satanic panic was real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get your now. Is this is this an elf thing? <laughs> oh man, I want to summon Chick Track. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I was always uh, when I was young. I remember always being a little offended. They never made a dude track. Come on now. <laughs> what am I? Over? I like the, I like the devil too. <laughs> so, like, we can make dude tracks, but they'd be incredibly chill, like the Big Lebowski, mm. you know. <laughs> Abides, you know. You have to make a white rush. I love it. All right, so um, he kind of uh, he uh, you know, like uh, walks to the far end to see actually what um, uh, Kojiara is doing there at the um, because you're still over there, like looking over the barrier. He walks over there uh, to where Kojiara is. And he's like, uh, while while y'all are doing everything over the elf. And it's like, um, have you seen what you're looking for here? Um, I definitely haven't smelled it. Mm. Are you fools like these that would arrive here without a, without a clue, without any knowledge of what they were doing? Or have you come to, to commune with the infant? I, I, I dabble. What do you know? Well, I know this. I know that if you will pay the master's price, you shall see things that you never thought possible. You shall, all the way, the, the, all shall be clear before you and all shall lie out infinite as it's laid out before you. That is the power of my master. Oh, uh, I don't think I could pay you today, but you know, um, like a credit kind of thing. I mean, I mean, if I learn all this stuff that you say, like, your master knows, I might be able to get it, like, later, like, with all these secrets that are here. You should run. That's what my hand was saying. <laughs> your hand. <laughs> um, he, uh, he kind of, like, sort of, like, wanders over. He's like, you know, you might do best to, to just simply leap. Leap now and join the others down in the pit down there. Maybe it's for the best. Best for all concerned. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. I don't, uh, what's down this this tunnel over here? You see this? And I'll point out that, that tunnel that uh, I saw. 
Secrets that you are not prepared for. Secrets beyond anything in your comprehension. That sounds like the way to go. Mm. And you're saying, you're saying I can't go down there? I am saying if you tithe your thousand gold coins, then you can ask your questions. I'm saying if you go and soup around, then the master shall deal with you as he will. Is anybody uh, looking over here? Like I'm kind of like off by myself and everyone else is like doing something, doing the ritual, right? Well, Brank's trying to keep an eye on everybody. Yeah. So he's okay. constantly turning and... I, I guess I'd be uh, taking taking a glance around to see if like like it's obvious that someone's like looking at what we're doing over here by the ledge. Yeah, you look over and like, well, while some people are, um, you, you know, uh, Brank is definitely keeping his eye on you kind of off of the distance. Okay. I won't do anything then. Um, I, cause I don't know what, I don't know where me and Brank stand. And Wait, I don't want to make a lot, a lot of very big game here, but in all honesty, you're an old man in rags sleeping on a cave floor, like an animal. Uh, perhaps you are able to fleece the gullible and naive from their gold, but as again, that's not us. So, and it's kind of like, not, you know, semi I'll, I'll twirl my dagger on my finger and be like, perhaps you should show us where your, your ill-gotten gains are so we can relieve you of them. And then right, maybe, um, my friend, maybe my friend Tia Martha here will, will give you a blessing and help you save your soul. All right, here, here's what you seek. And he goes over to the wall and gets a staff and he comes out with it. And, uh, you know, sort of like walks over to Anatol and then, um, like, he just whacks you over the head with the staff. Kadoosh! <laughs> uh, point of damage. And uh, he says, leave now and do not return without the promise. <laughs> so he really cracked my friend on the head. <laughs> Ow! Go! The servant of an evil. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to attack him. All right. Um, so, what are you going to do? I have my sword out. All right. Yeah, out. Walk over there, swing out with your sword. Yeah, swing my sword at him. That's All a right. weapon he does. Um, here's what happens. Right. Gotcha. Um, you can go ahead and make an attack roll. All right. Uh, that is a ah, 14. All right. Here's what happens. Um, as your sword gets up close to him, he's like, just for an instant, like his... Uh, the, the edges of his body goes um, like like go, go uh, kind of blurry, and then he becomes a black smoking shadow, and then the whole thing disappears. And sort of like the uh, the smoke sort of like fades back, and sort of like heads up those stairs, uh, well, up that up that uh, east passageway that uh, you guys haven't seen before. He just disappears. Yeah, y'all see him transform into a smoking black shadow, and then you know vanish. Yep, I'm done. Tavern. <laughs> We've seen worse, Brank. <laughs> okay, this clearly this is a den of evil. We must cleanse it. Let's... Yes, I mean the, the six of us. I'm sorry, Freethia. The six of us. Um, before have we slain a giant chaos demon, I'm, I'm sure this little parlor trick of smoke is nothing to get worried about. Although I heard that, about it, heard about the giant demon thing. That was good work. There was also like three times as many of us then, though. <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it was a culling. It just like the cream of the crop. It, it rose to the top. <sighs> All right. So uh, what do we do? Uh, I'm going. Uh, I'll look to them and be like, I'll I'll start heading down that way if you if you'd like me to. Which one? The, the direction of the down the tunnel that uh, Kojawara and he were like kind of discussing and where it looks like the mist went down. Gotcha. Yeah, so there's a there's the, the precipice and there's like a, a, a passageway going off from the northeast. Uh, before we go, I would like to bless Anatol as gotcha. a warrior. I want him to and uh, carry just to see his blessing with him. All right, uh, go ahead and uh, make that roll. Is he said no? <laughs> <laughs> hey, point of disapproval. Point of disapproval. <clears throat> and I say, pretty please. Uh, 
well, well uh, you know, like, all right, I put a little more effort into the prayer and say, you know, those den of evil, like, you know, we will smite this chaotic entity and that's another point of disapproval. <laughs> I'm gonna give up and say, okay, no, we're on our own, guys. Let's go on. She doesn't like Anatole. Yeah, I mean, I am oh, still, I am still a cut person in a way that I would. While I am righteous, I'm not that righteous. Perhaps we should leave oh. that for. Right. A work in progress. You and me both. All right. So I will start. Um, with uh, I didn't buy. I don't. I, I didn't buy a ten foot pole. Um, but I will just walk like kind of, uh, softly, you know, checking my footing as I, you know, head down that way. And... All right, so you're, you're well, careful. Do you need a torch? Oh, you have a 10 foot pole? I have a 10 foot pole. Oh. Um, and I can see in the dark, so I, I can, I can be a guide if you like. And yeah. All right. Cool. There's actually candles all throughout this section right here. So that there's actually, uh, you know, adequate light right now. Cool. Okay, do you, do you want me to be, do you want to borrow my 10 foot pole or would you like me to be like the meat shield? No, you could, if you want to be like beside or behind and I'll be the one in front with the pole, it's fine. Okay, all right. All right, so um, yeah, you go up tapping carefully. That passageway only goes about 15 feet until it, uh, you come to the bottom of a steep stairway going up. Oh, and also just a quick mechanics thing, just a, a reminder that both Wiggs and I uh, will get automatic checks for secret doors if we pass within 10 feet of them. Just a little reminder. I appreciate it. All right, well, Brendan, the stairs, do they have any markings on them? Or are they just stairs? No, nope, they are stairs carved into the stone. Now, when we entered this place, we came in through a cave entrance. Was that like at the base of, of a mountain or something? I mean, is there a lot of up that we could go from here? Um, yeah, um, you know, like it was, a, it was sort of like the, the last foothill before a tall mountain. So yeah, it could go up quite a ways, you think. If, uh, you, you've, already, you've probably already gone about like, you know, say more than a hundred feet uh, to the you know, inside. So uh, you're certainly into the point where here where it could go up quite a ways, you think. Nice. All right. So, you know, keeping my eye up, left, right, you know, looking for any like obvious, maybe spears coming out of the walls or spinning blade traps or things going to fall on me. I will start going up the stairs and hitting the stair in front of me. What's, what's your modifier to find traps? Uh, my find trap modifier is plus two. Okay. You uh, carefully go up those stairs, tapping ahead of you, checking the ceiling upon occasion, looking up. And um, you do not see anything. But when you get to the top, um, you see that the uh, there's a landing at the top of the stairs, and uh, uh, there's a locked gate there. You see a massive metal gate blocking the passage ahead. There's a large metal plate set in the middle of the door with a keyhole positioned at the center. Beyond the gate, you see a large stone portal carved in the image of some hideous monster, glittering with jewels. I got, uh, hey, guess what, guys? I got a something, something. Uh oh. Hold on a minute. So I'm sorry, through the gate, we see a stone door that's carved like a monster. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm going to uh, hold on a second. Nope. Sorry, y'all. I thought I had a visual of this. Well, I'll just, while he's doing that, I just relate back to you guys. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a gate here. There looks like there's a keyhole. Um, I have not yet been able to purchase myself any thieves tools. They're a bit pricey. Um, so we might have to think of another way in, if it's locked. All right, hold on a minute. Um, let me, um... all right, I'm gonna share my screen with y'all. Ew. That's so that's behind. There's a gate before that, or yeah, that's the gate in front of. Um, yeah, there's a gate in front of the actual door. 
and there's a, you can see where there is the, um, uh, hold on a minute. You can see where there is, uh, I'm gonna unshare with you. Bip, 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 bip. And the gate is floor to ceiling? Yeah, gates, floor to ceiling. Um, the, you don't see any, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yep. How wide are the uh, yeah. bars? Say again? How wide are the bars? Like they're narrow enough that oh, something- you can reach through it fairly easily. Reach through, but not really. Like I couldn't slip through, right? I couldn't get my head through it. You couldn't. You couldn't get your head through it. No, but you could. You could reach through without too much difficulty. So Brank will uh, rummage around in his backpack and say, "Well, I brought my lock picks," and pulls out a big crowbar. <laughs> yeah. um, I do have one of those. I can assist you with that. I actually have a set of lock picks. They're on my zero level character sheet. <laughs> oh, really? Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> See, Martha, this is... I happen to have these. You, you just have... <laughs> this is yeah. unlike you. You really turned your life around. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was my other zero level. I'm so sorry. I lied. I was mistaken. I'm terribly mistaken. That was That's my... That's cool. Not my costume. Not my cleric. I should have known better. <laughs> no worries. All right, so... um. Yeah, so the bars, you can, you can pass it on through the bars, but you can't pass your body through them. You see the gate, you can see the, the, um, the portal beyond them. All right, I will just do a cursory evaluation to see if there's another way we can, before we brute force this, like I'm just gonna look behind, I'll try and reach behind the, if I can get my hand through, if I can go behind the yeah. center lock. Uh, so you know what, you get your hand through and kind of like reach behind it. And um, yeah, you actually like can feel like a little, like a, a knob thing on the interior part of that that you can reach um, part of the gate. And this is an aside, I did not remember that. This is just, this is not my, uh, I've played this before. This, I, that's something, something I've thought of doing, so. Yeah, um, I, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Um, you can, okay, I, I'm trying to say, like you can reach your arm through. You can't actually quite, you can get your arm through, but you can't quite touch the back of the plate where the key goes. But okay. you can kind of, you're, you're close to it, but you can't quite get your arm to it. How thick are the bars? Um, they are very thick. And um, Brink, you recognize these things as being adamantine, uh, uh, adamantine alloy. You may as well have left that crowbar in your trunk. We're not bending these things. If we can't bend them, though, do you think that we could perhaps move them enough that the latch would... And also perhaps I have some arrows. If you would like to try to put an arrow in your hand as you're trying to reach up and see if you're able to kind of use the arrowhead Ooh. to kind of maybe turn the knob. Yeah, we'll do that. Ko Kojiwara, right. on, on your hand, is, is that just a mouth or is that like a whole face? It's a whole thing. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, it's a mouth. It's got, yeah. Well, can you reach your arm back there and have it take a look at whatever's back there and see if it can... Uh, give us any insight? Um, I could. Um, he, he seemed pretty, like, against coming in here, so I'm, I don't know. He might be a little sore at me if I feel uh, to him, you know? I, sh I should get, like, a hat with fingers on it so I can just... <laughs> you? A little. <laughs> I'll pull so out well, the hand. Uh, what are you... But I like some... Sorry, sorry. What are you going to do, Kujimara? I, I pull out the hand and uh, you know have him uh, inspect the uh, the lock or the, the 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 door, the gate. All right. So you reach it through, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, I can definitely see there's a latch on the on the uh, far side of it. Um, you know that you can. Uh, yeah, it's a release right there at the back of that metal plate. And then he kind of like, and then he kind of says, "You know, if you die, I'm just going to go back to the abyss, right? You know this, right?" No, no, I didn't, but is, that that sounds right. good. Is that where you want to go? Yeah. You know, 10 million years from now, a thousand years from now, two weeks from now, I wind up on another hand. Always, Come on. Always. Don't do that to me. This is the only hand. <laughs> well, I'll, yes. I'll, do the, uh, I'll do the arrow idea that um, Free Theory right. and Queen Lily had, there, and I'll try and... Yeah, um, give me a DC 10 uh, reflex uh, check. I get a plus one agility. 
that's not good enough, but I'll spend two points of luck oh, man. to roll my luck die. Yeah, with my luck expenditure, that gets me right to 10. Yeah, you know what? You like you're back there with this thing and it's like like a, a, a click. And yeah, sure enough, you uh you flick something and uh you like the 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 gate uh, opens up. Nicely done. <sighs> so uh, beyond that, um yeah, so now you can you can like you know the, the gates can you can kind of shove them aside. You can see or like they, they kind of open up towards y'all, and you can see that the uh Beyond the gate, you can see that the floor, walls, and ceiling are constructed from smooth stone, blocks in sharp contrast to the natural rock in the previous area. A 10-foot-tall stone door carved in the image of some ancient demonic beast glares balefully from the far wall. Three fist-sized emeralds are set on the door like eyes. Large clay jars stand at the north and south ends of the chamber. This is and this is all before the door. No, this is built into the door. So that, that's that oh, door that I showed. Oh, you. gotcha. Yeah. I'd like to cast the tech yeah. you, want to, you want me to pull? You want me to share a screen again? No, 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 no. I just, I, yeah. No, I'm good. And also, Tia Martha's detect evil might still be going. Um, and my detect magic was uh, lasted uh, lasted two turns. Has it been yeah. more than two turns? Six turns. It's not been more than two turns. And. Um, that's an hour. Yeah, what you got? You got a uh, eighteen. Yeah, um, there's definitely some enchantment, um, but like the whole place kind of radiates an enchantment, like level of enchantment. You know what I'm saying? What you got? Sixteen? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Yeah, you can see that this door is enchanted. Um, you know, the the gems are enchanted, and they're you know the the whole place seems to like you know there's a low level of magic radiating throughout everything here. Are they trapped? Perfect thing. Uh, checked evils still. Up that last yeah. Time. Um, uh, yeah. There's definitely a hazard associated with this door, according to your detect evil. There's something dangerous here. I share that with the group. Um, what about if I, I look specifically at the jars? Does that tell me anything? I'm that glad that you asked. Oops. Yeah, sorry, can you remind me the what's going on with the clay jars? The north and south, right? There's sure. a bunch of them. Um, yeah, there are uh, two clay jars um, at the north end of the chamber. Um, you gonna go over and check them out? Yeah. I'm not gonna get too close. All right, um, so there's two at the north on the north end of the chamber and two at the south end, okay? The, the north end ones, they have got uh, flower bulbs in there. Um, and uh, like when you kind of like get close to them, like you can see that that kind of that thug that's hanging over the whole place. This is definitely a component of that smell are, is the, are the bulbs from these flowers. There's something here that's just like, you know, when you get close to them, it's, it's, and you know, like sniff them, it's almost intoxicating. You go check the two jars on the south uh, side and uh, they are filled with water. Just regular water? As far as you can tell. So we're seeing these because these jugs aren't stoppered. They're just kind of open clay jugs. Um, they are open clay jugs. Okay, okay. So if I go over and look at the the bulbs, do I recognize them at all? I mean, I, I, uh, I sold fruit for a living before I became a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any? Um, give me a, I'll tell you what, you can give me a, a skill check. Roll me a d14. This is an exact, that's close enough. Here's my 14. Stop rolling. That's a seven. No, you do not recognize it. Also, um, Freethea the spirit was a sage in her former life, an elven sage. Does she recognize these bulbs from her books of um, plant life? Give me a D20 check. D take a D20 check. Add I, rolled your I rolled a 19. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, these uh, are all bulbs from the uh, you know, the frogfish flower, and uh, they're uh, they're known for they're, people will use them for herbal medication. They'll kind of put them in um, for like a, as pain relief and for um, to help people sleep. Um, some kids will like 
take them and dry them out and grind them up and sort of like inhale them to kind of like, you know, get a little head rush, you know. Kids these days. You never did that when I was a kid. <laughs> and is kids. there any danger in, do, am I aware of there being any danger in coming into physical contact with them? Not coming into physical contact with them. They're not, they're not something you should eat and they probably, you know, make you, you know, sit like sick, but not, they're not, they're not, uh, you know, according to Hoyle poisonous, you know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, not good for the digestion, but you know. Perhaps I'm overthinking this, but um, maybe if we remove these bulbs from the dungeon and take them outside and let the air clear a little bit, um, we might see this place more for what it truly is and be less affected by the flower, the flower bulbs. A really good idea. Uh, Rick is really, really fast. I could run them out real quick. You want to like carry them outside? I'm sure. Yeah. While they're doing All that, right. I'll start checking for traps, Brendan. If you want to roll for me, it's uh, I got I got a plus two again. Um, I'm gonna look. You know, I'm doing the usual. I'll drag uh, I'll drag my dagger across the the floor in front of the lintel just to see if there's anything there. You know, I'll be checking the sides, any like trip wires or things hanging or anything. You know, we open, is it, they're going to be something that falls on us. I'm doing gotcha, all the gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, so, do, 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 do. all right, so, um, you start, you, okay, um, yeah, what's your, what's your modifier for that? It's a plus two. Okay, yeah, you, um, uh, you drag your dagger across the floor there, um, and then sort of like, you know, nothing happens, and like you don't you don't find any trip wires there. Um, you're you're not actually making contact with the door, though, are you? Like, uh, not near the handles. Um, okay. I would probably not be adverse to touching the wood, just to kind of like, as long as I don't see any glyphs. You do, there's no glyphs on it, right? You don't see any glyphs. No, you see that kind of it's kind of got that monster look to it, that monster face to it. Um, it's got iron reinforcements over it, and then the top part in the archway over it, you see those those three huge emeralds. All right. As long as no one else is too close to me, where I'm afraid that they might get caught, I'll be you know doing my thief thing, ready to move. But I'll um, I'll start off with like a, something longer, like my dagger, or a, like a, or an arrow, or a crowbar to touch the door, getting ready to jump back. And if okay. nothing had, like, from that happens, I'll, I'll move my hand. All right. You have everybody kind of stand back. You can sort of touch the wood of the door with your dagger. And uh, nothing seems to happen. All right. So then I'll, I'll move to my hand. All right. Same thing. They're already um, moved just in case it's flesh that triggers something. Gotcha. Yeah. So you you touch this and um, nothing happens. I will say in this time, um, Wiggs, you have the opportunity to take two of the take those two jars full of flower bulbs and take them and put them outside the dungeon. Um, do we leave them? I mean, are we taking them out and dumping them, or are you going to leave them in the in the <clears> jars? <throat> Uh, I want to leave them in the jars, but I also kind of want to hide the jars a little bit so we can take them and sell them or use them as chloroform when we rob people. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of hide those behind some bushes and then run back to my party as fast as I can. Yeah, you got it. You drop those off and kind of like make your way back in there. Yeah. Um, Tim, you touch the wood of the door with your hand and uh, uh, nothing seems to happen. It seems to work fine. All right, so nothing's happened yet, and those are mighty fine-looking gems. And those smell like regular emeralds. Yeah, you you inhale off those things, dude. Imagine like, you know, yeah, it's like the, the scent coming off them is intoxicating. These are the biggest emeralds you've ever seen in your life. You have no idea. Like they're so big, it's almost like we'd be better off smashing them and breaking them up and recutting them and selling them as smaller emeralds. Like it's, well, I'm just it's, glad that I've got no the. Emeralds. I'm glad that I've got the big beard so no one can actually see me drooling. So I'm just kind of, you know, <laughs> flicking the yeah. saliva away. Yeah, I mean, these aren't the kind of emeralds that you sell because no one could buy them. These are the emeralds that you give the king as a gift. Like, hey, we're friends now from the dwarves, right? Right? Uh, you know, because there's just, there's almost no amount of money. I mean, it's, it's you know, you've never even heard of something I these big. You know what I'm saying? It's like ridiculous. And it's all, those are, those are big gems. If, if I were to take them, we wouldn't even have to go further in, I would think, right? I mean, these are enough for set us for life. I, I mean, so. they'll certainly make you more than 3,000 gold pieces, you think. I mean, they're huge. 
I know you said there's danger, but I'll leave it up to you as the party. I say there are treasures that are more valuable than emeralds. There's, there's did, you, did you see them? Look. <laughs> I'm talking about treasures of the mind, of the spirit, secrets, information. Well, of course, you're a treasure. Jeffords don't, don't but... take secrets. They take coin. Well, I, I appreciate your, your quest for um, uh, knowledge, fair ladies. Um, I prefer to be able to pay for, for companionship and ale, and that's what these things will do. <sighs> oh, Anna, so what do you do? All right, so it seems that Brank and I are for taking them. Uh, what, what say the rest of you? I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to taking them on the way back out. I, I think I'm not opposed to taking them at all. I just don't think that we should take them and leave. I think oh, that's part of this place. Of course. Right. There's still gold down there. I can smell it. Uh, there's work to be done here. Um, I, I, if you want to take them, I think it's probably a trap because I think this, this door has a trap. It has some kind of danger here. Okay. Um, but if you do take them, uh, let me try to give you some protection before you do, and then we'll step back, Okay. way back. Also, but, we have two jugs of water. Could these jugs of water have something to do with? Well, we don't have those anymore. They're outside. Well, there were two separate jugs. The flowers. Yeah, there were two jugs uh, of uh, flowers uh, we took out, but there's also two jugs of water that we did not take out. Gotcha. And Brendan, is the air in this area kind of starting to clear out a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can still smell it. I mean, they've clearly been here for a long time, and that they're kind of like hanging in the air like pollen. But it's uh, you, you, that intense intensity of the smell that you had a moment ago is not there. Does our perceptions of the room and its environment seem to be changing as well as the air is clearing? Not really. No, not really. It all seems about the same to you. You know, um, uh, I mean, that, that smell is still like, you know, like, especially like when, um, when Wiggs, when you like made your way out and came back, like when you walked through the, um, both times, when you walked outside, you got like some fresh air, like, oh my gosh, you hid those things really carefully outside. When you came back in, it still hits you. When you walk in, you're like, whoa, you know, like, you know, like, like walking backstage at a Black Crows concert. I, hear. <laughs> I, I would like to take one of the jugs of water and I would like to pour just a little bit right by the base of the door and to see if it actually kind of goes under. Uh, yeah, it definitely seems to. All right. I don't know what else I want to do with that information, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real door. Like you can see, you can see water is kind of, there isn't a huge gap underneath there, but there's a little bit of a gap and you can see that the, the water has gone down there and some uh, of it has passed in this chamber. Am I able to see the bottom of the of the jugs? Do I see that there's anything other than water in here? I mean, it's pretty dark, um, but yeah, you can kind of see down into there into the, um, you know, uh, hold on in here. I'll be right back, Brendan. I gotta let the dog out. Okay. Oh, sure, sure. Um, uh, yeah, you don't, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, like you, you can, you know, like if you, you hold your like light source over it, and kind of like look down into it. And um, yeah, you don't see anything necessarily down there in the water. Just, uh, but it is, it's, you know, you know, you can see like, I mean, eventually, I mean, it's so they're, they're, they're deep enough where you're seeing the bottom of them. If you, if you dump the whole thing out, you know, that's the only way to really be hundred percent sure. But as far as you just taking a look, you don't see anything in there other than water. Mm -hmm. All right, what did I miss? Um, <laughs> Rocks fell. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Did Queen Moon Elise say what the properties of those bulbs were? Just yeah, just... Okay. mild hallucinogenics, and they just make you feel real nice and chill. Okay, so they don't have any mis medicinal effects at all. They could be used for um, for pain relief. Okay. So if you've got a nice barber surgeon who wants to go ahead and do an amputation, I'm sure it would certainly be helpful. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. All right, um, I guess if, if uh, 
Uh, I think we should open the door at least, or do, but I don't want to be too close to it when they do that. Yes, I think that since it seems that Justicia has told you that the, the door is trapped, but I was not able to find any of them, maybe you all should just kind of go more into the hall and I'll try and open it. Um, yeah, I will. I would like to uh, cast hey, protection from. On what? Sorry. What did it cast? Uh, did you say you were going to cast a spell? I'm sorry. See, um, Val. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, if I can. Um, I want to see if I can protect um, Anatole. Uh, oh no, that's within a radius. That would mean I have to stand next to him. I would like to try to bless Anatole. <laughs> So I, I, before you, before you uh, uh, attempt it, I just want to throw out like another idea potentially. Um, I have the spell cantrip, which it seems like it can potentially like um, you know jiggle like interact with like a doorknob or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. That could be another another avenue if we wanted to try to do it from like afar and not risk someone. So I I also have. Uh... A non-magical item. I have a rope and a grappling hook. You could just like, at least that would give you some distance on opening the door. Does it? No, Brandon. Looking at it, do they seem to be open towards us, or do they open? Uh, I tell that. Looks like they open inward into the chamber beyond. Which side are the hinges on? Are they on our side? Other side. Oh, it's never that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take the whole door off. Hmm. Almost like they saw these coming or something. I don't know. Like it was planned. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday there will be a dungeon where someone well, doesn't you ask. You want to write that dungeon, Val? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to bless Anatol one more time. Okay. Um, that is uh, twelve, eleven. Yes, is that's failure again. I, but right. I didn't get off my racking up the old approval. Your fate is in your own hands. I'm sorry, Anatole. I, I don't. I don't think Justicia likes your profession. I'm sorry. Uh, perhaps if we get out of this alive, I can talk to you and we can find out why Justicia is not happy with me. Come to church on Sunday. Maybe I'll make a tithe <laughs> or something. Problem right there. All right. Um, yeah, let's just get this done, all of you away, and I'll see if I can open this door. All right. You um, um take you. So everyone backs up. Um, you go ahead and grab the handles to it, and kind of like like um. It, there's it's it's definitely it doesn't feel like it's locked because it opens a tiny bit. It's almost like it's barred from the other side. Okay. I'm gonna ready my crossbow while I'm waiting. You got it. If it is barred from the other side, does it, it doesn't move at all, like or like it. Yeah, it moves a bit. Yeah. Does it move enough to stick something through to try and like wedge up the the bar or? Yeah, you think you can do it? You got something a real narrow, like um, like an arrow. I can slide my knife over. Yeah, I have. Uh, a knife. Yeah, you think a knife might be the way to do it? Yeah, I have daggers. I have. I'll look at my dagger, my crowbar. I have crowbar, no, dagger, maybe. Yeah. Right. I, um, I do. Have, I have spikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can give a check with that and um, uh, try to um, open it up. Try, try it open with your uh, with your knife. Like, it's like like putting them in the crack and lifting it up. So I like, use like a pick locks check with with that. Is that? Yeah, do like a pick lock check. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. So that's an eleven. Um, I'm gonna spend one point of luck. All right, all right. What'd you get? That makes it a fourteen. Uh, okay, no. Um, yeah. So you get in there and kind of like start jimmying it, tick, 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 tick. and yeah, eventually you like lift this bar up and you're like a gadunk gadunk on the other side of it, and you can, you can hear the bar has dropped off into the passage beyond beyond that. Well, you and now lift this bar up. And you're like a gadunk gadunk on the other side of it. 
and you can, you can hear the bar has dropped Problem off solved. into the passage beyond, beyond Oh, it. no, you said the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Let's see. I'll be right back. Because <laughs> we still have yet to see what it was that the detective was detecting. Is it, does, is it still evil? Oh, oh big time. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, be careful. The danger is still there. Um, All right. Um, yeah. So there's a uh, uh, yeah. There's a darkened hall behind the door. Um, like completely dark. It looks like it goes east and west, or excuse me, north and south. It goes like just as you step the door. It looks like a hallway that goes like to the you know goes um, goes right and goes left. So that'd be north and south, y'all. Right. So Rethia wants to ask Tia Martha a question, which is also Jeff asking Brendan a question. Um, Tia Martha, is your is your spell? Is it saying the door itself is evil, or is it saying that there's danger beyond the door? I will try to get at an angle where I can tell. <laughs> you kind of like move around in such a way. You had an eighteen. Um, yeah, it said like like you 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 feel like the door was somehow inherently dangerous. Um, and I mean, the place, like I said, everything here radiates kind of a low level of danger. But the door itself is somehow inherently dangerous. Is it the doorway, like the arch, or is it the actual object to the door? Let me see. Okay, the I'm, I'm reading a. You had a, a 16 on that check, if I'm not correct. The spell. What yeah, on your, on your detect evil when you cast it, it was a 16. It was an 18. Let me let me let me 18? do it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think she had the 18 and I had the 16. I had the 18. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Yeah. The. Uh, Let's see, yeah, objects. Um, it looks like the I guess objects inherently dangerous. All right. Um, yeah. So it looks like those uh those three emeralds on top of it are um radiating danger. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I'll say, don't touch the emeralds. Um. Maybe we uh don't uh maybe we stay below eye level to the emeralds or if they're the eye, you know if they were eyes we'd stay below them. Um, when we pass by or. Um, um, I'm gonna pull a torch out of my pack, Brennan, and light it. Um, right, light a torch up. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put it through the archway and through the doorway to like look at the floor beyond just to make sure that, you know, there's not a, a raised tile or something that we're gonna step on. Sure. And then you look through there, um, there's a low hum droning from the darkened hallway behind the door. But as soon as you put your torch through there, like you hear a boom. And suddenly the ceiling is illuminated as if by torches, but you see no source of the light. The thunking sound continues. And like the corridor, it's lit all the way down, like north. Um, the floor and walls in here are absolutely spotless. And now the entire place is lit up as if by torches, but you do not see a source of light from anywhere. That is some torch. <laughs> Does anything happen with the eyes when with the emeralds when this happens? You uh you you step back there and take a look at them. Um, no, they seem like they're kind of I mean, you know, if they are like eyes, it's kind of they don't have pupils, so maybe they are watching you from all directions, and maybe that's the danger. But um, you don't see anything specifically that's like you know. Mm -hmm. We can always cover them in mud. True, or we could also perhaps drape something over them? Yeah, I I don't have much to drape. Um, yeah. I I still have that lasso. I could I could bind their eyes, but that that seems like it would involve a lot of touching, which I'm fine with. Um Although this might be a good use of cantrip if cantrip can perhaps just kind of muddy up the the emeralds. Um, I don't have that spell, I think. Uh, no, but Kojuaro was telling us that he yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can give it a try. Yeah. So you're gonna try to do exactly what with the spell? Um, it's It sounds like what we're trying to do is mask these is it the emeralds that we're trying to do this to? 
Yeah. Like muddy them? Is that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like get them dirty so they have a hard time seeing. But make mud and use your, <laughs> use your cantrip to carry the mud to the. Perhaps. Yeah, it seems like even if I get if I get a high enough roll, I can even like cat like create like a like darkness like around them or something like that. So yeah, I'll give that a shot. Not really darkness? No, I mean it's not that powerful. You know, you can make a simple effect there. Like you can make it kind of change colors a little bit. Oh yeah, you can make a patch of darkness over yeah. one uh, that last. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, you can you can. Uh, to, to darken up one of them. So there's one left, right, and center. Which one are you going to try to focus it on? Um, what do you all think? Maybe maybe the center one? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a shot on that. All right. Uh, have you rolled your material effects yet for your spells? Um, I had, but then the PDF that I had for my character sheet uh, erased all the information. So I, I need new ones. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead and uh, make a material effect check for uh, your cantrip spell. Uh, 20. Did you add your luck modifier? I don't think I have one. You have no luck modifier? No. Nope. All right. Whenever you cast a spell, a rush of wind occurs. Um, and uh, torches flicker and may go out. So it's a rush of wind when you cast a spell. So um yeah, you want to go ahead and make your make your spell check? I did, and it's a failure, so I lose the spell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie shoot. Wah wah. Sorry. Well, these I'm eyes sure are with you. They're only on this side of the archway, right, Brendan? When I look up on the other side, there aren't eyes yeah. over there as well. The other side is just wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I mean if we want to take them, maybe we worry about this on the way out or even blind them, but on the other side, they're not there. So I'm not really worried about them seeing us. It's up to you all. Maybe if we just close the doors. What was the, what was the door barred with? Just to... um, yeah, there was a pretty, a, a kind of a crappy piece of wood on the far side of it in two, bra in two brackets. Um, you know, like it, it, it looks ancient, you know what I mean? Kind of rotted through a little bit. And so, these, these lights don't seem to be like disintegrating it, right? That's the other thing I was worried about. I was going to throw something in there, but then I realized the wood's you know, in there. You see lights, but you don't see where the lights are coming from back here. You know, there was a, there was a, it made that huge, big, crazy noise as you walked through, but you do not see any source of the light. Just that it, 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 is, a, it is lit up as if there were torches, but you don't see any torches. You don't, you don't see any sconces or anything like that. It's just, you know, solid lights throughout the hallway. So Queen Muna Lee and I have been thinking, and an idea we've come up with is perhaps we can go back to the original chamber, and with our dagger we can slice up some of the um, of the blanket that was covering our sleeping friend. Um, we can use the water that we have here and combine it with some dirt from the outside to create some mud, and with the little patches that we cut off from the blanket, affix it right above each emerald with the mud so that the little patches of fabric are hanging over the emeralds and the emeralds can no longer watch us. I also have word portal as a spell. So like we could just go through the door and then I cast word por portal. Um, we and do all of these things. Up. We could do all the things. Yeah, there's no reason to not over, over <laughs> to not be overly cautious. Let's overbuild. Okay. Do we like this idea? Sure. Sure. All right. So Queen Moon Ali will um, step back into the main corridor with Frithia, and they will begin cutting up little strips of fabric, and then right. they'll gather some dirt that they'll bring in as well. Okay. And you're going to just, you, the mud is going to get attached over the top of these things, correct? Right. So that the fabric just Who's going to be the actual doer of this? What's that? Who's going to be the actual doer of this? So, Anatole, are you comfortable doing that? Yeah, I was saying, these things are kind of high, right? Yeah, yeah, they're high up. You have to you tell me how you're getting up to them because they're. Up, up, I mean, up, I, I can, the... I can climb pretty well. Oh, you know, okay. I got climb share surface, so. 
I'll kind of just scatter my way up there and, you know. And you're going to kind of make a muddy patch up there and then sort of use it to hang like a strip of cloth in front of each one of these emeralds. Sure. Okay. Um, I want you to give me one luck check while you do this. Cl uh, give me a climb check first. It's an easy climb check because once the door is open, you can kind of put your foot on the, on the you know, the door, you know, inner frame and such. So just give me like an eight or better on your climb to your surfaces. I got 17. You're fine. And then um, give me a luck check as you are hanging these things over this. So roll a d20, roll a little under your luck, please. Yep. My current luck is now a 15 from the my expenditures. And I rolled a 17. Ooh. Okay. So here is what happens. You start getting ready to like uh, hang the first one, okay? And um, not meaning to, but you actually come into contact. Like the blanket touches the emerald while you're touching the blanket. Um, and uh, y'all see uh, uh, that uh, Anatole falls down on the ground and um, he's like, oh, he grabs his chest and like he starts to vomit. He's like, you know, violently ill and such. Um, he screams, he screams terrified. And then you see his eyes, okay? Um, uh, his eyes move over his body and onto the floor, like off of the body and land on the wall and leaving the faces with only smooth skin where the eye sockets would be. Um, and uh, you see there's a pair of eyes sitting there on the ground that are looking up at you guys. So, um, uh, Tim, if you have that prop, go ahead and bust that out. <laughs> so all y'all can see right now is a pair of eyes. See, um, Tim, one second. One second. And that can also be your COVID mask. Yes. <laughs> you go grocery, grocery shopping in that. So I was trying to do a, get a green screen going in case this happened and have this, like, just have a green mask. So like, I would actually be invisible for only my eyes, but <laughs> I couldn't get it to work. That's hey, amazing. Tim, uh, read the text I sent you. Okay. Uh, Anatole? Kneel down beside his body and try to check him out. His body is laying, his, he feels okay, but it's, it's warm, but... Is he breathing? He's kind of breathing shallow, but um, you don't, you know, he's just laying there, it's just flesh over where his eyes were. Do the eyes, I'm sorry, the eyes are in the door or in the floor? The eyes are sitting there on the floor and doing like Tim's doing there. So Brennan, I have eyelids, right, too. I, go, yeah, I can blink. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Anatole, can you hear us? Hey, guys, let's, uh, let's go ahead and stop here for a second. So um, suddenly, uh, surprise, 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 something leaps off the ceiling and attacks y'all. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and roll here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. It's moments of this that Preeti and Queen Amunali are happy to be counted as one. <laughs> <laughs> one of those, one of those odd cases. So uh, here is what happens. One, two. So um, Timoth Timothara, um, off of the ceiling, this uh, creature leaps down and uh, tries to get you. One moment. Um. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, you get um, yeah, this thing like you you all see a giant spider um sort of like you know come down off the ceiling and attacks uh Tia Martha, uh Tia Martha it uh has a uh, bit you you're gonna take uh you take six points of damage from that. 
Nasty. And uh, go ahead and. Uh... All right. Um, yeah, you take six points of damage, and uh, that is what happens. Uh, it has bit you. Um, so you, you all can go ahead and roll initiative at this point, uh, everybody. Um, so, whew. including me, spiders. Ben. Why did it have to be spiders? <laughs> Anatole, you roll as well. So Anatole's eyes kept motioning upward. Does that mean that it's motioning towards the door? He was looking up towards the ceiling, kind of. Um, okay, Kochihara, what'd you get on your uh, initiative? A 19. Oh, I think Anatole was warning us about the spider on the ceiling. Okay, Freethia, the spirit, and Queen Moonalay, what'd y'all get? 20. Oh, shit. Yeah, forgot about that. All right, let me go. Let me back this up a little bit. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. I, you know, I forgot all about the detect evil spell, which is still in effect and still ruining adventures after all these years. <laughs> um. So. Uh. Yeah. Back that damage up. You get a. You get a tingle in your spider sense. Ah! That's never gonna get old. And uh, yeah, you look up in time to see the spider getting ready to come down on you guys. I swear that spell. All right. Uh, well, I could have had second sense. Just think about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna back up, and you guys can react before it actually goes. But we're using the same initiative. So, um, Freethia and uh, the Queen, what you'll get? Twenty. Twenty for initiative. All right. Um, uh, Team Martha. Five. Okay, um, uh, Wigs. Ten. Ten. Okay, uh, Brank. Fifteen. And Anatole. Three. Okay, so um, yeah, his uh, so Anatole, your eyes are now kind of like set into the floor itself, as if so it looks like the floor is actually blinking up at you guys. It has lids and everything, <laughs> um, and uh, you will have an armor class twelve, um, but more if you close your eyes. It'll be higher if you close your eyes. <laughs> you feel like closing your eyes is protective somehow. Is well, I'll probably, I'll probably do that for the entirety of this combat since I don't think I can do anything else. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So you are going to keep your eyes closed. All right. Um. So. But his body with uh, his uh, eyes with his eyes covered over. Is his body just laying limp on the floor. His body is laying limp on the floor, and it looks like there's just skin, just flesh, where his um, eyes used to be. The eyes are actually set into the floor. Like, in other words, it looks. Y'all saw it happen, but it looks as if the floor just sprouted a pair of of eyes. So it's not eyeballs, like golf balls, sitting on the floor. No, they're like two, like like the like the floor has opened its eyes and is looking at you. Dun 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 dun. Guys wearing bell bottoms, beware. <laughs> All right, um, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> it's freaky to fear Queen Moonalay. It is your turn. There's a giant spider that has been evil detected. Oh, oh, oh. I'm All not right. going to forget this. Oh, uh, no. First question. Do you care about us tracking things like arrows or not really? When you're here in the dungeon, yeah. Yeah, okay. let's let's keep an eye on the arrows and things, spell Perfect. components. This, for, for this adventure, you know, like, you know, it's, it absolutely matters without a town being nearby. Great. I am letting loose one of those arrows. Ta! Take your uh, shot there. Yeah, I got um, um, a modified 20. Beautiful. That's absolutely going to hit. Go ahead and please roll me some damage. Three. Okay. Um, yeah, that is going to you. You 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 hit the spider with your arrow. It does some damage, but it, it's going to keep. Uh, it is still in this fight very much so. It is time for Kojiwara to do something dangerous. Um. 
So I think I'm going to run over to uh, Brink and uh, cast Enlarge. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless that's something you don't want. I, no, I that's fine. Maybe I... you're like a warrior type. So, um... Oh, yes. You're not going to do it on Anatol? <laughs> <laughs> Giant <laughs> eyeballs. you going to be one of those big eye paintings like you saw in that movie? <laughs> you wanted to... Uh... Okay. Roll the spell first. 24. 24? Nasty. Um, prismatic distortion. Nearby light is distorted. Roll me a die six, please. Uh, five. Five. Uh, the light takes on a green... It says green, orange, blue, yellow hue for 1d4 rounds. So it actually affects all the quality of the light. Y'all, you can decide what color and such. But yeah, the light and make that enlarge check. All right. Well, I hope this light, uh, you know, compliments Anatole's eyes. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to lose a spell. I rolled a four, so there's no no amount of spell oh, yeah. I'm willing to do no. to make that work. Oh, there's no light weirdness or anything. And um, he tries to of uh, he tries to cast that, and uh, yeah, gets a gets a nada s perfecto. Um, and that is, as they say, that, and we are in the next bit of the initiative, and it is time for Brank. Brank, you are not in large. You're only regular large. What you I'm do? a regular living large. Um, this fighter is still on the ceiling, right? It hasn't jumped yet. I'm sorry? It is still on the ceiling, yes. Okay, so uh, with my deed, I'm going to try to uh, knock it off the ceiling and onto the ground. Um... Um, I rolled a 19, to? but I've got my crossbow. Okay, gotcha. Um, um, I, I rolled a one on the D die, so that doesn't do it, but it's a 20, uh, straight 20. Yeah, uh, give me some damage there, cousin. Oh, what's the crossbow do? And the unmodified was a 19? Unmodified yeah. was a 19. Okay, so that's also going to be a crit for you. Is that a crit for a dwarf? I always get this confused. I thought that was just warriors. Oh, was it? I thought I thought that applied to dwarves too. I might be wrong. Um, double check. You know, it doesn't. It's not on their chart like it is for. Um, yeah, that's not a that's not a crit for a warrior for a dwarf. Gotcha. That's a regular. Okay, so I did six, but my deed did not go off. Okay, still though, that's a nice shot. You zap that thing with a crossbow bolt, um, and uh, it is still up and in the fight. But we'll see how it. Um, we will see how it goes. Cause it's not over yet. It's time for wigs to do something elf-tacular. Magic missile. Okay, and do you have your material effects? I bet you don't. Go ahead I and do, know. actually. What now? I do, but most of them are terrible. That's, um, that's the way mercurial effects are. <laughs> that's gonna call uh, for a quest. It's gonna call for a quest. So do, do you want me to tell you the mercurial effect first? Yeah, go ahead and tell him the curial effect for Magic Missile. Uh, one finger melts away. <laughs> oh! So you will good? Magic Missiles? Uh, or, or tell. Does it have to be your finger? I was going to ask that, because it doesn't specify, <laughs> and it does say it's by the judges. Because Anatole's not using his right now. <laughs> you know, you've done enough terrible things to Tim. <laughs> remember, what, what number was that for uh, Wiggs' spell? Uh, it was eight. 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 I'm going to look at the exact wording here. All right. Count of ten. Each time the wizard casts a spell, one of their fingers or toes melts away. For every two digits lost, you get a minus one penalty to agility. They can be replaced by magic, but if you ever run out of them, you cannot cast this spell. But it doesn't say my toes. So I could just keep like an infinite supply of toes. Like obviously for this one, I'd have to, I'd have to use my uh, own. One of, what it says is one of his fingers or toes. Oh, but so you're I saying mean, like carry a bag of fingers with you? Yes. Oh <laughs> my God. that would oh. be one of your fingers. Gives you I, all those fingers. That is so dark, I love it. All right, you know what? It, it's kind of murky, so l let's give this one luck check. Wigs, roll that luck check, and if you make it, yes, this can be toes that you have collected, but to own them, to own them, you have got to get them from people like that you are snatching them up from. So give me a luck check. Okay. D20, roll low. 
Okay, this is the dice I watched Hawk the Slayer with, like you told me. <laughs> no, don't leave it. Power Hawk. I rolled a five. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there, <laughs> there is a corpse upstairs that is not doing anything with those fingers and toes. Can we just say that I grabbed his fingers and toes like on the way back from taking the flower bulbs out? Uh, you know what? Let, I'll say you had time to grab two. <laughs> Thank you. Because you said you rushed up there. So we'll say you have two, right now you have two fingers that you can cast off of this thing and such. I know we're busy. If you ever run out of it. So keep track of how many fingers and toes you've got laying around because I swear by all that you care about, it will come up, you know, so. Exactly. Uh, I know we're busy right now. So I think I'm going to have to have a talk with Wiggs at some future date. <laughs> about what? Uh, also, I'm I'm gonna that. what's your alignment, though? <laughs> about you're desecrating corpses. <laughs> yeah, oh, but you, you need twice. to respect our cultural differences, Tia Martha. Is it? Is it? It's, uh, it's a thing. I've never seen an elf do that. I'm not desecrating them. I'm using them for a better purpose. <laughs> Wait, are we having a philosophical discussion while there's a giant spider in the room? Yeah, that's why it's I want to have a conversation. Go ahead and cast your magic missile spell right now before we. Uh... I'm just jealous that you have any spells that are useful. <laughs> no, if my companions are starting to radiate evil, that's all I want to know. <laughs> The chaotic ones all definitely radiate. I mean, you catch all the chaotic ones, so. Okay. Raise your hand if you're chaotic. <laughs> there needs to be a, like a detect utilitarianism. It's called neutrality. Uh, 18, so one die four missiles that equal damage equal to one die four plus caster level. Four, five, five points of damage. Uh, total? Yeah. How many? Um, it was just one die four missile. Oh, I forgot to roll that. Hang on. Yeah, roll that. your head keeps disappearing. It's hilarious. I know. I'm trying to do it on purpose. <laughs> uh, four missiles. All right. So roll me four die four uh, plus whatever. So do it up. Nine, ten, uh, 13 points of damage. All right, so here's what happens. I'm going to say that like all of your missiles look like fingers. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, hit this spider. Um, it just, you just blow the mess out of it and it falls down there on the ground. Kadoosh. Um, it is dead. You have killed the giant spider. Imagine if her magic missiles just got released to things until they explode. <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot of legs. Does it also, do those count as toes? Uh, no. Okay. Those are not big. Those are, I don't even know what, whatever spiders have. Pseudopods, I don't know. Help me out. What do you, ichthyologists? Um, have pillow, pillow pads? <laughs> pillow pads. Shut up. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, you have uh, blown this thing up and uh, are ready to, and uh, it is dead. So from where you're, the hallway is still um, completely lit up from where you can see, and you can either go north or south. Um, I'll say you look south. south. Um, south, it goes about like, um, about 30 feet south to a dead end. And it looks north, it goes about 50 feet and then turns right. Well, wait a second, what, what, are, what are we gonna do with Anatole? What the heck is this? Dark uh, magic. Anatol, um... Brendan, can I move? Or can my eyes move? Yeah, you try to move, and, like, your eyes just start moving down the hallway, staying a part of the floor there. But they kind of, like, sort of swim down the hallway there. And so his... I'm going to look at Anatol's eyes and say, Anatol, blink three times if you would like us to move your body into one of those cubbies in the entranceway. He does not want... Oh. Oh, he does want us to do it. Yeah. All right. Let's go move his body to one of those cubbies. Okay. So you go and hide his body in a cubby. Um, those uh, bodies. Yeah. Okay. Try to lay on hands just to see if it does any good first. Just, just shot in the dark. Lay on hands. Say again. 
I'd like to lay on hands just to see if it does anything at all for poor Anatol. Gotcha. Make your check there. You never know. Um, Are you going to cast it on the eyeballs or the body? Uh, the body first. I don't want to touch his eye. Right. That's an 11. I'll spend a luck because I like him. Nice. Do anything? It's worth the same. Uh, no, that gives you a twelve. Um, nothing seems to happen. Um, yeah, you know, the holy power works, but there's no change. All right. Well, pat him on the cheek. Sorry, man. <laughs> All right. So we leave the body there. Anatole, are the eyes going to follow everybody through the uh, through the through the dungeon to keep coming along? Well, this could actually be kind of handy. Yeah, we're, I'm gonna, the eyes are going to follow. All right. So they, the eyes, they're slightly, they, they move about the same rate as the dwarf. They can kind of like go at about 20 feet and sort of like move through inanimate objects. Cool. Um, I might, I'm going to try to move up the wall. Yeah, you swim up that wall. You all see these two eyes just sort of like move up on the wall, always staying the same distance as they were when they were in his head. But moving up that way gently, like yeah. So I'll I'll continue to do that just to get a different perspective and maybe be out of the way. Gotcha. Okay, so you're going to stay in the walls essentially and move along that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got it. Um, yeah, you uh, uh, All right. So um, yeah. So uh, you are following everybody along and. Um, are going to uh, continue along the dungeon. So um, which way do you go in this hallway? You can essentially go south to a dead end or north to where it turns to the right. We've, um, we've hidden the body in one of those creches right now or it seems okay. Shall we look to the, um, shall we go to the south and um, Wiggs and I can see if we can find any magic to seek any secret doors? Sounds good to me. Wiggs and I will get a plus four on those checks. Gotcha. Yeah, when you get when you get down there close, Wiggs, you uh, definitely detect a, a secret door uh, there at the end of the hallway. Okay. Uh, is it is it also trapped? Is it only one way to find out? <sighs> yeah, Martha, is it radiating evil? Is it? your spell's still going. Um, is it radiating evil? Not especially, no. Not especially. I, I well, it was in other words, there's kind of a background level of menace in here, is what, I, what, I, what I'm saying that for, okay? Like, everything in here is like, yeah, you should get the heck out, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything in here is like that. But the, the door doesn't have anything special, you know, no green gems or anything like that, in other words. Okay. There's no intent. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to give me a splinter. Um, is the door locked? Um, the door is, well, you can't see how, you got to figure out how to open it. Um, uh, give, everyone give me an intelligence, intelligence check. Brennan, I want to try one thing while they're doing that. I want to see if I can go under the door on the floor. Yeah, you absolutely can. You roll right under those things. Rip. And um, you were on this. You were on the opposite side. Now you're on a little bit of landing over there. And on that side, you can totally see that there's a catch up on the wall um, that uh, will open the door. All right. And I haven't. I don't feel like I can manipulate things. Right. I can pretty much only just see. Yeah. You don't think you could actually? There's nothing you could do to like to to um, to to yank on it or anything like that. All right. So I'll I'll slide back to the other side. All right, so um, y'all see that uh, Anatole's eyes go under that door and then come back. Um, Any... blink three times if it looks dangerous. Okay, it doesn't seem nope. to look dangerous. No monsters, no threats, nothing like that. I guess that means no. Anatole, I never noticed before how pretty your eyes are. I just want you to know. <laughs> uh, Anatole, do you have any, uh, with, since you're the one with the expertise, do you have any hints for us for trying to get this door open? 
because I don't have a clue. <laughs> uh, everyone can give me an intelligence check from this side of it. I got a I've, 15. I, did, I failed it. I have seven. I have a 15. Is that right? Oh, six. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, you know what? You um, uh, find like near the floor, um, uh, uh, Frithia and the Queen find a little catch on the floor, real low down, hard to see. Um, but it, uh, yeah, it, it's clearly something unnatural there. Uh, it looks like this is it. All right, I use the um, I use the handle of my hand axe to open it up. All right. Yeah, you kind of press down on it, and sure enough, it opens on up. And um, yeah, you're looking at a landing that leads to a very steep stairway. Up or down? Down, going down. And again, once again, carved into the natch, carved into the floor. All right, so shall we start heading down? Yes. Who wants to lead the way? I'm the tankiest and can see in the dark. Okay. And you can smell gold. You can lead. And I can smell gold. gold. Lead directly to it. All right. Um, so yeah, so you guys uh, head down these stairs. It goes again. These are stairs are very steep. There's no rail. You guys go down um, about. Like say like 50 feet, there's a landing and then there's another stairway going down off that landing that continues to go south. And now it, it kind of turns a little bit to your west. Um, and uh, you guys uh, make your way down there? Yeah, yeah. and I'm kind of um, looking for secret doors on the landing as we go. Sure, gotcha. Um, the landing, nothing hits not landing. When you get down to the very bottom of the stairs, you can either go uh, to your northwest or south east um and, and from look here you can see that, that i'll say that, like you have a torch so northwest you can see it goes about 20 feet to a blank wall um and uh uh and it uh uh it actually and like it looks like it's the back of some kind of weird door from, from there is what you can see but it's small like a almost like a little tiny portal that you'd have to like, almost like crawl through if you weren't a halfling. Um, going down <laughs> to the south, the passageway continues to, to, to make its way around to gosh knows where. Tim's, Tim just did a really, oh yeah, Tim's head is gone. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, so Brank, which direction uh, smells the most fortuitous? Which smells goldiest? Uh, from here, you think, uh, I, let me, let me read something real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty slim pickings from exactly where you are right now. Let me look something real quick. Yeah, from here, you're not really detecting anything in particular. So, um, you're not sure, you have no, you know, no sense of gold or gems either to the northeast where that weird little portal is or to the south. Northeast of the south, sorry, northwest or southeast. Uh, they smell about the same. Yeah. Does any direction seem particularly more chaotic than others? <laughs> no. <laughs> more chaotic. I was <laughs> lying in wait at any, yeah. One hallway is like, woo hoo hoo hoo! Just oh, yeah, to that. <laughs> It's a jibber jabber in action. All right, I say we just uh, pick a direction and go. Uh, let's let's head to the northwest. Uh, we can have uh, Anatole sc scout ahead. He's very stealthy now. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys make it to the north. Uh, like you, you, sorry, it's northwest or southeast. We're going northwest, southeast. Um, northwest. Yeah. Northwest. Uh, well, northwest. It goes like it's about ten feet to that little portal. Um, and uh, that is what you see. Does this look like the backside of a maybe a secret door? This could be the backside of a secret door, sure. Is there enough room in there for Anatole to slip through? Yeah, I mean, he's part of the floor what he wants to be. So yeah, he can slip under there, no problem. Hey, Anatole, can you check it out and see if there's anything dangerous in there? <laughs> Slide underneath. All right, um, uh, 
yeah, you go underneath there and you find yourself in a, uh, a pit. You say, okay, Antal, I'm assuming you're going. <laughs> Tim, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. yeah. Tim, you slide under there and uh, yeah, sure enough. Um, yeah, you find yourself in uh, uh, a pit and you are like, it's like a giant pile of bones uh, is, is down here. Um, uh, there's a, a fresh corpse down here covered in earthworms that are kind of like boring, boring at it. Uh, other than that, it's just bones everywhere you look down here. Um, you know, and like you look up all the way and you can kind of see light coming from somewhere high above. And that is all you've seen. Okay, I, I will, I'll slide back out. All right, eyeballs come back out up from under. Anything dangerous in there? Worth exploring? Is that that's a yes, right? I think that's a yes. God, you're gonna have a headache at the end of this thing. <laughs> All right. Um, we don't have anybody really to check for traps or anything, so I guess we'll just open the door. Yeah, it opens really easy from this side. Cha Ching, you open it. See, up. I don't know what what the thieves are making a big deal about. It just opens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to tell you that's trapped for a little while longer, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, from this side, um, uh, yeah, uh, you, you know, you see that there's this like, um, uh, yeah, just just, a, just piles of bones everywhere you look in here. One corpse that's covered in, uh, one corpse that's covered in worms that are kind of like boring into it all over the place. Corpse that probably died in the last week or so. Um, and that's just giving it a, a quick glance around. That's all you see. Do we see, does it have uh, 10 fingers and 10 toes? Why? Mm. Let's, uh, let's have a luck check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me a luck check. Roll d20 and roll low. Or it's or it's uh, toes and things eaten up by my worms. Uh, nine out of 17. Yeah, I'm going to say you were able to salvage. Roll me a die six. That is how many fingers slash toes that you were able to, to salvage up. Five. Nice. Yeah. Five, you know, these the worms have all eaten into the other ones. It looks like these worms eat by secreting acid on the flesh. So you see, like, the, it looks like the, the one hand, you kind of like pick it up, cold, dead flesh. And it looks like the other fingers have all been eaten away just by acid, toes too. But they haven't gotten to the one hand yet. So you can get five fingers off that. It's see, four Thank you. Oh, the jerk material is. components like Gygax intended. Yes. Good looking out, well, friends. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Harvesting fingers and toes as you go across the land. I got you. You do what you got to do. Hey, it's, you know, you know. Um, uh, here you go. Um, so uh, looking around yeah. through the pile of bones, is there any any equipment came down with these things? Uh, you dig around for a while. Uh, I'll tell you what, for the most part, it looks pretty clear pretty much uh, like, like picked clean, except as you dig through, um, yeah, man, you find a, a battle ax down there that's got some uh, word inscribed on the handle in Dwarven. Oh, I read Dwarven, what does it say? Um, it is a proper name in Dwarven. It says Ultimac. Which is Ultimac. A Do you guys mind if I hang on to the Dwarven ax? No. All right. Like the best candidate for it. Yes. Um, before we get attacked by something horrible, would you excuse me for a moment? Yeah, actually, sure. I need to step away for a quick second too. Okay. Well, you. a minute. I'll uh, I'll sit here and jibber jabber at the at the uh, stuff. So um Sorry. and uh, and uh, uh, Will, do you need to go too? Uh, no, I'm good. I mean, well, I can Will, go. Thank I guess. You so much for joining us today on uh, Blades Against Bandwidth. We appreciate you stepping in. We're gonna have a, a, a new week, new guest every week, and uh, you guys should know that. Uh, like I said, Will, one of my gaming buddies, we met at Momocon um, two years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, been one of my good gaming pals ever since. And has recently ditched us for Colorado. Yeah, no, it was crazy because I, I ran into Brendan and, th and discovered, you know, how close I was to the Goodman Games and then immediately moved away. Yeah, Some harsh nonsense right there. Yeah. But, uh, but we had fun up until, you know, we had a good time for a while there. 
So, and you know, I, I, I trust that we'll get to hang out again at some point. I'm getting yeah. obsessed over Colorado. My, my go-to uh, quarantine show so far has been um, uh, Community. And it has just, um, I, I, look, Tim, Tim is explaining to his family what he's doing. I love yes. that. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, I am once again, um, you know, like, oh, Car- I, 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 I've been to Colorado. Colorado is so gorgeous. I'd love to at some point wind up there. So. See, um, uh, you know, pretty much the entire time I've been here, we've been in quarantine. So the inside of my house looks uh, pretty nice, I guess. That's, you should go a- do a, a Harley ambush road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Just show up. So, I think he's. Close, he, I think is he closer on the New Mexico side, or is he more north? Carbon Carbondale, I think. Uh, how far are you from Carbondale? I, I'm actually like 30 minutes from the Wyoming border, so the New Mexico side is is on the south. Yeah, I I don't know for certain what part he's from, but just from some of the pictures he posted of his him and his kids skating, it looked very New Mexico-ish. So I wasn't sure. Yeah, he uh, he is from actual Carbondale, as I recall. It means nothing. That's fair. Yeah, I'm about an hour north of Denver, up in Loveland. Well, did I game with you at Gen Con or something? No, I think it was at uh, Cyclops Con we did something. Actually, before Cyclops Con, I ran, um, what did I run with y'all? Oh, I ran uh, uh, the World Ender. This Remember we all played that with Doug? Oh, he was in that. Yeah, like, before we actually. And it's not just his voice, I'm like that bookcase behind him looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the bookcase is new from then, so that can't be it. Someone else that probably has the same yeah. bookcase. Everybody. I didn't play World Ender with you, Brendan. I played, we, we did like bo- the weekend before oh. um, uh, Cyclops Con, we did a, a test run of something. Uh, okay. Uh, well, Neon well, Knights. Yeah. Neon Knights. Oh, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh-huh. All, right. Yeah. All right, cool. I, I, looks like everybody's back. We're ready to, we're ready to move on. All right, so um, yeah, uh, so um, the uh, crew, you guys, uh, so that that the, that axe is the only thing you find there amongst that bone pile. Okay, right. great. Uh, I guess I'd like to uh, do some kind of a blessing thing. Uh, you know, just try to lay these bones to rest somehow before we leave. Yeah. You, you spend a minute there praying over them and uh, hoping for their ascension onto the next live and session. Very, very cool. Very, very in line with being a cleric. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, uh, you know, you put the, you put the, the love of God onto them and, um, mm-hmm. are ready to, uh, um, to, you know. May they get the justice they deserve. Yeah. No. May they get, may, may, may they indeed get the justice they deserve. But that is the only thing you find down there. All right, let's get out of this charnel pit and see what's south east. Were there... Uh, there were no other doors in this pit? No. Um, the secret door is the only thing that you see. Um, or if somebody wanted to climb the wall, they could yeah, there presumably get up there. Oh, yeah, you tea. Could, you could, um, yeah. It, oh, hey. It's Hello, Hello. Hello. Oh, precious. Oh, appearance. Oh, now she's getting squirmy. Um, yeah, uh, you could, I mean, it would be, here's the thing, it's a hundred foot at least to the top up there. That climb looks very, you know, real dangerous, but it's not undoable though. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't found my 3,000 gold yet, so <laughs> not ready to leave. Yeah. Maybe Anatole could tell us if that's the ledge that we walked past on our way down. Oh, hey, Anatole, could you just like slide up the wall? You gonna go for it? All right. So um, yeah, Antal, sure enough, Antal slides up that wall, takes him a little bit, but when you get up there, yeah, sure enough, you find yourself on the uh, far end of a rickety barrier 
looking back into that room with the obelisk. But when you look over there, that obelisk is completely turned around and looking directly into you. And uh, where to everybody else, it was just an eye in the wall. You see this as a very real, very alive eye looking back at you right now. Oh, no. Oh, that's creepy. Thank you. I do my best. All right, I will, if there's nothing else that, aside from that creepy eye, uh, I'll scoot back down. Gotcha. All right, you, uh, you scooch back down and uh, arrive back down there in the bone pile with everybody else. I'll ask, were there any creepy eyes in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't ask that. Um, does, it, does it seem safe for us to go in that direction? That's either a yes or a maybe. Is it what I thought? Is that the is that the uh, ledge that we walked by when we came in? Oh, I think that's yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think something up there broke him. So he's only a pair of eyes, but he can hear us. He can hear you. Yeah, communicate. I like listen to you guys. I'll ask, can you smell too? Can I, Brennan? <laughs> you got to give him something to smell. Oh. All right, now. Um, I'm going to say uh, no. There. <laughs> I'm going to oh, nice. I don't know how you can hear and not smell. I mean, you can clearly you know, hear people, but I don't know. It's magic. Magic is weird. It's, yeah. It is. Yes. So I will say that uh, you can't smell, but everything smells like island. It's weird. <laughs> oh. oh, that's my favorite smell. <laughs> you the island. Oh. All right. So uh, what do y'all do? Uh. Do you, did you want to, oh, okay, so I, I do have a grappling hook if you really wanted to explore this, but like all the gold is somewhere else. Yeah, no, I think we should keep exploring down here. Okay. All right. All right, to the southeast. Okay, you start making your way down the southeast. It goes, um, uh, it's like you like head um, like go southeast, and then it kind of goes just east for a while. Um, you find some stairs going up to a landing, um, stair and like on the other side of that landing is more stairs going up. It's a long hallway with two sets of stairs in it. What you see? And I'm going, uh, you know, slowly and carefully. You know, I'm not any good at looking for traps, but I'm you know making a show of looking for traps. Gotcha. You were got my battle axe kind of pounding on the steps in front of me. Sure, shifting walls and rooms and things, though, you probably like it, locate. So yeah. when you come to the end, uh, you actually, the, the, the hallway goes up two sets of stairs, and it goes about another 30 feet, and then it ends in a schlink. Like you see a ladder going up into a shaft that heads up into the ceiling. So that's in the hallway, or that's in a room? So the hallway dead ends, and then oh, okay. like, there's a the ladder there at the end of the... Um, uh, shaft, and it looks like that. Um, yeah, the shaft uh, goes up like uh, uh, you know. It's it's a um, there's a set of well anchored iron rungs um, built into the shaft that will allow you to climb up if you want to. I hiss at the iron rungs. Does the shaft only go up, or does it go down as well? Only goes up. Um. If they're, while they're, you know, if they're looking at it, Brendan, I'll just start going up the wall. All right. Um, yeah, you uh, you start going up the wall, and um, you uh, yeah, uh, quickly get, when you get to the top of there, and like you have to like go up the wall and then across like the interior of the ceiling, and uh, yeah, sure enough, you are looking at um, what is clearly up here a trap door above you. But how trapped is it? <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, before we go any further, I had 
really good luck uh, looking for secret doors at that last dead end. So I want to try it again. Sure. Yeah. Um, you look for the secret doors and you do not find any. Yeah, especially not with a nine. Nah, nah, even, even so. Okay. Even, even if I was going to invent one all of a sudden and add there, you wouldn't be. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, the, the, at, the, at the bottom of that shaft, the end of that hallway, you do not see any, uh, you'll find the secret doors. Well. Is uh, my detectival still up? And uh, what, yeah, for two turns. Six turns. Six turns. Yes. Yes, detectival is still up. Uh, door look like a danger to me. Uh, no. All right. Um, I will. Uh, I'll say that it looks like it's not trapped. So I'll. I could go first, or the dwarf. Could oh, we need our cleric. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, technically, you have three elves in the party. So you know. True. Um, I mean, technically, we have three elves. I see three. Um, Brendan, <laughs> which way does the door open? Is it like a push door? Yeah, it looks like you got to push it up. Do we still have that 10-foot pole? I, I do. I think I got it back from Tim. Uh, I mean, Anatole. Uh, yeah, I'll push I'll push the trap door open with my 10-foot pole. OK, um, there is a lot of resistance as if there is something on top of it. And uh, as you push it up, you can see it's opening, but it's all dark on the inside there. Is it? It's not. It's not the it's not the guy that turned to smoke and darkness and floated upwards, is it? Just um, like regular darkness. You don't see any movement, <laughs> movement or anything. You just see like a I attack the darkness. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. Oh, uh, that's it. Uh my strength. Uh, my strength is a nine. I might need an assist on this. But I'll try to I'll try to push it open. Yeah. Um, you push it open, and here's what happens. So you shove it open, okay? And it flops open. There is clearly something on top of it, and it looks like you're looking at the underside of uh, of like some kind of like canvas. You know what I mean? Like there's like um, some kind of woven fabric, uh, sort of like covering up the hole has now been created now that you've shoved this thing open. You obviously kind of like push this skew a little bit, but it's still up there covering that, that uh, the way in there. Okay. Does um, it almost look like there's like a carpet over it? Yeah, it very much could be that. Brendan, since it's opened up enough, like for probably for me to get through, I'll I'll slide into you got the. It. So um, yeah, you you actually slide along the floor under the woven rug. Not I'll keep nice my eyes closed because it's like I don't want to rub my eyeballs against the backside of a rug. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, all of a sudden, um, so uh, when you finally get into this room, um, you hear like a loud -tunk, like you heard down there before, and suddenly you were in a completely uh, uh, chamber lit as bright as day, even though once again there's no visible source of light. Um, you hear like ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, like going down and down and down and down, but you find yourself, um, you are looking at a, um, a maybe 15 foot by 15 foot chamber. There is a hallway heading out of it to the east, and you had a, and uh, you can see, yeah, there was a, there's a rug. It's now been partially pushed aside, and it's askew because of the <coughs> trap door getting open underneath it. But um, yeah, there's definitely a, a rug over that trap door, and it's a corridor leading out. A uh, corridor goes, what you can see, about 25 feet to a door. All right. Other than that, though, nothing else really of. Uh just the glowing light and other entrances and exits and doors and stuff, but no, like nothing in this room itself. Um, the one, the, the, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of an empty chamber. Um, it's lit up. You can't see any light source. And uh, the only thing you see here is that corridor leading out of there. Okay. That is what you see. Yeah, I'll slide back underneath and if they see, see if they still have the trap door open at all. We could spike uh, it open if you want. Say again? Uh, we could spike it open if you want. I have iron spikes. All right. Yeah, so I, I'll go back that way and head to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, are you guys going to 
like shove past the, the rug and keep going in there or yeah all right yeah so you guys climb up you shove the rug back and yeah you guys find yourself in this little chamber there with this um thing in the middle of it the rug has now been pushed aside and uh you guys can see that there's like a 25 foot hallway that goes to a door I've, I've made sure I've wrapped my cloak uh, nice, nice and well over my hands as I'm climbing the iron rungs. I don't want to come in contact with this unholy substance. Yeah, even through your, even through your uh, cloak, you can feel the, 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 you know, the pain sort of like coming through this thing, leeching at your body. But, uh, yeah, you climb up there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's distasteful, but you get up there at the top uh, without, without hurting yourself. You and wuss. This Wiggs stuff. is carrying around iron spikes. <laughs> I'm also carrying around a bag of toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't go by Wiggs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, do you smell the gold through here? Do I smell the gold through here? Does he smell the gold through here? <laughs> uh, I'm sniffing. Definitely. Yeah, you uh, you concentrate and sniff for a while, and you do not actually uh, detect any gold from where you are right now. I think we took um, a wrong turn somewhere. I'm not smelling any gold at all. Uh, yeah, it's uh, from where you are this minute. Yeah, you don't uh, you do not detect anything. Um. So what do y'all do? Scurry on. Yeah, so I'm sorry, what were our, op what, what were our options up here? Uh, pretty much either going back down the way you came or going down that short hallway into the other door. Well, let's check out that short hallway. All right. Um, yeah, short hallway leads to a door. And uh, Detect Evil is not detecting anything wrong with that door. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm up here. I'll go ahead and open it up. Okay, you open it up. Um, you are looking into a, uh, it's a long room stretching east to west. There are wooden weapon racks overflowing with armaments a full length of the room. There are a few shields hanging above rec uh, rectangular chests. Ooh. That is what you see. There's also an archway that um, looks like it has some stairs going, like uh, archway leading to a passageway that looks like it's stairs going down. I hiss uh, and I shut the door. There's too much iron in there. <laughs> <laughs> I say that room is foul, it's disgusting, but we must go through, I imagine. <laughs> but I will not lead the way through that horrendous room. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, you guys uh, open up that, um, yeah. Um, is there any yeah. fine mithril in here? Uh, no, um, there is a whole bunch of weapons in here. Um, you guys want me to uh, read the uh, the breakdown? All right, now here's the thing. These are all, okay, so I'm gonna, um, all right, so there are a total of, now uh, there are two battle axes. You know, actually, right down here. There's uh, two battle axes. There's a number of blow guns down here. There are, um, there are daggers, darts, hand axes, javelins, longbows, maces, a bunch of like a variety of pole arms, a two-handed sword, and a whole bunch of staves, like all leaned up against um, uh, different areas. There are two chests in here as well. Anything I can wield with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid Man. not. A steely gaze. <laughs> um, any armor? Um, you know what? There are two shields. Um, there are two wooden shields hanging on the, wall, the one wall and a metal shield. The metal shield is polished to a mirror sheen, um, and uh, that is what you see. Hey, uh, how, remember when you cast Tech Magic? Um, how long? How much longer? How long did you have in that total? So my Detect Magic was a two-turn spell. Right, I don't say we were right here at the edge of that at this point. Okay. But that um, that that metal uh, she uh, that metal shield uh, radiates a bit of magic. All right, I shared that information with Brank. Oh, a magic shield! Yep. All right, pluck that off the wall. Martha, because Tia Martha might be interested in that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is a it, 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 oh, it's a, a mirror shiny shield hanging off of there. Mm. 
Do um, I get there are two, uh, whether or not it's a lawful shield, would I get that kind of information? No, and you don't get anything like that right now. Okay. Brendan, while they're all kind of standing around, I want to see, am I able to climb up on them or only on the <laughs> floors and walls? Who are you going to try to climb up on? Um, you know, I'll try it probably on, on Tia Martha because she's been like the most tolerant of me. Gotcha. Are you going to try to climb up Tia Martha's armor or are you going to try to climb up on Tia Martha? On the outside. I appreciate okay, it. yeah. Like all of a sudden you see his pair of eyes like climbs up Tia Martha's armor and uh it's like kind of like you know, you know you see that uh Anatole's eyes are able to like you know get up there and uh you know actually be there on the outside of the armor. Well yeah. uh, it could be handy. I could have literally eyes on the back of my head, you know. Um you know, back of your helmet, sure. communicate to you. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, a little skin crawly, but, uh, you know, it's not like he can help his current condition. It's not just to <laughs> do what I want to do. I'm like, it's okay. This is fine. Everything's great. I would like the magic shield. Can I have the magic shield? Here, have a magic shield. Thank you. <laughs> and you said there were two chests in this room. Yes, there are two chests in this room. I smell a trap. Are they, can they read evil? No, Tia Martha does not detect any evil coming off of either of these chests. No. Well then, I'll open one. Okay, um, the chests are full of ammunition. Uh, the first one is mostly arrows, like 150 of them. I wouldn't mind taking some arrows. You could, you could as many as you can stuff into a container. How many is that? Uh, uh, I mean, let's say you can kind of max out at, let's say, let's say 36 arrows is about as much as you can cram in there. You know what I mean? Like, that's dangerously full. That's like, you know, if, if in an emergency, I might have you make a check to get one out, you, you, know, you know, in a single combat round. You know what I'm saying? Then I'll call it 30 arrows that I'll take. You can take 30, yeah. You, 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 you know, not 30 more, but like a total of 30 arrows. Yeah, Sorry, you got that's, that. That's what I meant to um, say. I got you. And then uh, do we open up the other chest as well? Yep. It is more arrows, including five silver-tipped arrows, and there's a bag on top of there full of sling stones. Okay. I, I do have a sling, and but I already have like 30 sling stones, so I'm going to check for like silver or something, just in case. Um, yeah, there's five, there are no silver sling stones, but there are five silver-tipped arrows in that particular case. Does okay. anybody mind if I take those five silver-tipped arrows? No, definitely. So amongst the 30 that you have, um, you can have five of them have silver tips. Perfect. Yep. Um, what, what was that blowgun made out of? Um, the blowguns are like, uh, there are, I'll say, there are a total of five blowguns. Um, they are made out of bamboo, I guess. They're, like, you know, you know um, wood, you know, something. Probably bamboo. Uh, I'll grab a blowgun if nobody objects. You can grab a blowgun. It does not say you, uh, what you don't see here are, are any uh, any blowgun darts. When uh, I but you can definitely darts, like I do. I do have a quill that functions as a dart, but like when I do, nah. find... mm. yeah. Uh, you know what? Like you trying to blow a uh, a quill through a through a blowgun dart. That sounds like one of those like you know test videos on. Yeah, you, 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 you yell and your feathers flying. <laughs> okay, so I'm only taking it for funsies, but uh, when I do find ammo for it, uh, is it like a one die four? Uh, let's see something real quick. Um, all right, just for funsies, let me take a just look here. Funsies. I should have that at the tip of my, I should have that like memorized, but I don't. So um, yeah, blowgun, you're looking at doing a- uh, D3 three or D5? Yeah, D5 if you're a, a thief using one for a backstab. Oh, that's um, 24. But uh, you're an elf, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's the thing about blowguns, though. You've actually never used one before. Um, and uh, if you, you, can, you can use one, you know, if, if for funsies, but you're rolling a D16 with a blowgun rather than a D20 um, because okay. you are not proficient with it. That, that's fair. You're one of swallowing that quill. <laughs> 
it's just gonna be hideous. Goals. Um, I just wanted a non-iron weapon. Mm-hmm. You got it. You can you grab a or anything. One bamboo loga. I have a staff. You know what? Did you say there was a bow? I did not. Um, I don't think. Uh, oh yeah, there's a die eight longbows here. Not just one bow, Jeff, my friend. Why, in fact, there are seven of them. Wow. Seven bows? Yeah, anyone wants a seven bows, anybody who wants one except for Anatol, uh, can grab one. No offense. Anatol, do you want me to grab one for you? I'll just, yeah, just go here. <laughs> and I'll, um, oh, I don't have anything to write with. Go here for yes, here for no. <laughs> <laughs> like a Ouija board. That's hilarious. Good call, though. Um, oh, you actually, right, uh, he actually can move his eyes onto a Ouija board. Oh, oh, my oh God. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I would want that out. I was frozen a bit. Grease pencil and go, yes, no, alphabet. He's all going to stare us down. Um, we should go to an artificer in the village and see if they can make us a uh, talking board for Anatol. <laughs> Hoping to help him before, like, Put him back in his body before that, but yeah. Be like, yeah. Yes, no. There's definitely a trap. Oh my God! Someone please kill me and end my existential dread. <laughs> <laughs> Those four things should probably cover it. You know. Or I'm hungry. Can you put food in my body, please? Like in his who has rising? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and that is what you see. Uh, and I'm sorry, there's another door out of here, right? Okay, there's two doors on the north wall, and then there's an archway that leads to, uh, looks like a set of stairs. Two doors and an archway. Are those stairs going up or down? Stairs are going down. And this room's all lit up, right? Yeah, everything here is all lit up at this point. It's just lights going the whole way through. The stairs are lit up? Yes. Do we see light coming from underneath one, both, or neither of the doors? Neither of the doors. Well, um, actually, yeah, they're lit up. There's light coming from both of them. Yeah. I'll, I'll do my usual if these guys want me to. I'll, I'll, I'll slide off Val onto the floor and uh, go. I'll go to the door on the left. All right. The one on the left is a storage closet. Um, and there's, uh, it's like, like clothes and robes and that kind of thing. It looks like the stuff that they got from travelers that no one gives a crap about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one interesting thing while you're, while you're in there though, um, is that, um, where am I looking at? It is here. Um, yeah, there's a metal grate set into a, uh, um, like, like a, like a little metal grate set, uh, into, a like a maybe, a, maybe an air shaft or something like that headed someplace. No. Uh, that's the only, you know, which for you, you know, like, nope, it wouldn't be anything to anybody else, but you could slide right down that thing if you wanted to. Um, um, I will else, do that. Uh, you're gonna do it? Yeah. All right, you slide, 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 and you come out into a large room. It's like his eyes have been for a while. What did you say? I say to my party, his eyes have been gone for a little while. <laughs> oh yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, you come out into a, a room. Um, this is a great hall with a high ceiling uh, held in place by two massive opalescent columns. Triangles of green light reflect off three gems set in a large stone skull that watches silently from a dais at the east end of the room. And where you come out, you're actually in the west end, um, Anatole. Um, with the skull being at the far, far side of it uh, on this dais. There's a grand set of doors leaning over the west end of the hall. That's actually not too far from where you pop out of these, uh, out of this thing. Um, there's tapestries in the north and south wall depicting enormous eyeballs on a background of crawling worms. All right, uh, I'll start heading back up. All right, um, you head back up. It takes you a minute to kind of curl the cues around there, but you come back up under and come out from under the door and uh, y'all see uh, Anatole's eyes come out back under the door. He was gone for a, a, a little while. Hey, I'm glad to see you're still with us. <laughs> Everything okay? Should we go? Should we go in? Hmm. Um, let's 
move over the place where we should go? Um, you know, just to give them an idea that I'm just sitting there and I can't really communicate, I'll just go over to the door on the right and go under that and check that one out. Okay. All right, you go over to that. Um... I guess he wanted us to follow him. <laughs> all right, so y'all all go through there? I'm not, no. Um, yeah, yeah Brank, Brank's not the smartest guy, so yeah, he's just going to, uh, that's where he wanted us to go. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you open the door, and it looks like it's just a storage room, um, and uh, there are piles of, like, clothes, boots, you know, travel gear in here. Um, nothing, like, super useful. But me, and clothes and boots and that kind of thing. I will re-up my detect magic. Okay, cast me some detect magic. I got a three. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, uh, you were going to lose detect magic for the rest of the day. And nice. I guess it's probably not smart to spend nine points of luck to keep it. So I'll just accept that. <laughs> Brendan, are there any more of those grates in this storage closet? One second. Um, no, the second storage closet, uh, there are, there's no grate in here. And it's again, it's just piled up clothes, boots, small clothes, that kind of thing. Stuff that they took from travelers that, you know, oh, you don't know, you know, you assume mm -hmm. a lot of different sizes, few of them have bloody wounds in them, that kind of, that kind of situation. All right. So Brank will take a minute kind of, you know, kicking piles around and looking for whatever it was that was useful in here that Anatole was clearly indicating. <laughs> getting getting frustrated that he's not finding anything. Yeah, uh, you uh, unless he thought you needed a new pair of trousers, then there's I mean, what, nothing in here. What What are you saying? <laughs> These pants are fine. <laughs> All right, back out into the other room. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, the only the, so you can either go out the door you guys came in through or um, through that archway down those stairs. I think he wants us to go through the archway. Then let's do it. All right. Um, I I can lead the way. I'll be a meat shield. Uh, All right. I'll be right behind. Okay. You head down the stairs and you you see um, apparently this comes into the same room, Anatole, that you were in earlier. So yeah, um, it's a great hall, high ceiling held in place by two massive opalescent columns. There's triangles of green light reflecting off three gems set in a large stone skull that silently watches from a dais at the east end of the room. And there's a grand set of doors uh, looming over the west end of the hall. So the, um, the like, you came in like you look over to your left and uh, yeah, there's a huge pair of uh, big magnificent doors over there. And there's tapestries in the north and south walls depicting enormous eyeballs on a background of crawling worms. How lovely is that? I check for spiders before, before we enter. Just... Okay, you're gonna go up there and look at the ceiling. You specifically, this, this room is lit up like daytime and you do not see any spiders up there. All right, where's the, where's the evil? <laughs> Oh yeah, um, God damn it. Yes, you see evil in here. Uh, so uh, yeah, it looks like those two pillars look dangerous to you. They have, uh, they radiate evil from whatever. There's evil in, the, in their pillars. Oh, those pillars are. Evil pillars? Evil pillars. <sighs> but the giant skull with the gems in it doesn't jingle at all? It's a nice skull. Um, it's just been corrupted by those two evil pillars. It's, right. Uh, either not currently dangerous. You know what? Um, the three. I'll tell you what, though. The three. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You look over at that. Yeah. Sure enough. Those. Uh, those gems are also evil. In the sky. Yeah. The gems are also evil. Yeah. Do the gems smell like gems to the dwarf? Oh yeah. They're like and like you know. It's like you're standing just outside a giant hamburger that you know is poisonous. It still smells amazing, you know, <laughs> and you're hungry. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, um, yeah, the skull is just sitting there. There are definitely, they said, um, oh, you know what? I actually, huh, you know what? I forgot I have a, uh, I've got a, uh, I've got a handout. Hold on it. 
Hand out party. Hand out party. All right, I think I got this where it's going to look good this time. All right, ready for this? You know, see that? Yeah. Mm. Oh. oh, that that's awesome. <laughs> That is not what my mental image was. This is so much worse. <laughs> and that is about where you guys came from, okay? So like, when you guys come out of there, that's almost the exact angle. So um, yeah, huh. pillars with eyeballs, mammies on the top of them, uh, skull, skull has got gems, pillars are showing up evil, skulls showing up evil, gems are evil. In the, the eye stalks. Are yeah, evil. the eye stalks. What? Okay, all right. There's always pillar. Clearly pillar. All right, that's enough for you guys. <laughs> hey, Brink, you smell any gold or just gems? Just gems, but boy, they're talking to you. Those gems <sighs> are truly outrageous. <laughs> I wonder if it's time to chop down a pillar. What does it, it look like it's made of? You're not sure. Um, I mean, you know, stone uh, of some kind. You can go like if you you can go over and investigate them and try to get a look, but from across from the stairway where you guys are all standing there, you are just not sure. Before we go in there, I want to cast protection from evil. Okay. All right, go ahead. This looks protect some evil. You know, a place to do that. If I've ever seen one, and I think I've seen one. So uh, that's a twenty total. I will happily catch a ride on Val. <laughs> All right. All right. So in relation to evil effects, creatures, and anything else unholy to my faith, and I'm pretty sure this is it, um, me and all allies within 10 feet get a plus one to saving throws against evil creatures, any attack rolls, except for a minus one penalty, uh, and damage from evil sources is reduced by one point per die. Minimum. Sounds good. Nice. That's a 20. So we're going to be like this little, this wad of characters centered on Tia Martha. Uh, me and uh, yeah, anybody within 10 feet. So five foot radius. So left, right, front, back. Um, yeah. You're important and you got a security detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, what are y'all gonna? So you see this? There's, 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 there's two big doors on the um, on like, off to your left, and there is uh, another archway that leads out of here. Um, that uh, you don't know where it goes. Bum, 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 bum. I I really want to cast color spray on those pillars. By all means, have you? Uh, do you know what your mercurial effect is for that? Is it terrible? I want to know. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> well, uh, okay, I, I did have a question about this. I rolled ten for mercurial magic, so I need uh, spilled blood. I think it's of a type similar to whoever I'm casting it, or no, it has to be of a certain intelligence, like a chicken or a goat. Um. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, first of all, how smart do you think chickens are? Because I've been around them and they're terrible. Yeah, goats um, are way smarter than chickens. I'm they're sorry. They're so ugly and Thank smart. You. And I right. actually what? really don't want to kill them for a spell. Or a spell partially drawn from spilled blood, sacrifice. Wait, let me find my material table. Do you have a jug of elf oh, blood? Yeah. A living creature with hit points equal to or greater than the spell's level. That's such a good idea. Um, must be offered up to the spells class. Otherwise, you're at minus four to cast it. Um, or patron I, which is terrible. Can I offer up my own blood? Um, did you see, did die? Let me take a look here. Um, yeah, it must be offered up. Uh, I'm a, so right now, if you cast it without... Um, Without having something that you can kill, you were to a minus four penalty. If you want to offer up your own blood, I'll say you can do a, a spend a round doing a point of damage to yourself with an edged weapon first. 
I'll lower that down to a minus two, but it specifically says you're to offer up a creature. Now, if you offer your whole life up and just like kill yourself, then 100% that spell goes off. Regular numbers, you know, um, you know, but, uh, um, but there you go. Okay, so I'll spend around uh, like cutting myself to offer blood. All right, yeah, so uh, go ahead and make your spell check at a minus two. Cast some color spray on these pillars. No bonus. Uh, that would be a fifteen. Um, I lost the page. Hang on. That is a. Um, I lost the page. Let's see. One thirty-five. All right. So um, one thirty-five. Two individual targets. Uh, what does that mean? Individual targets. Is that it? Uh huh. Uh, make a will save or be blinded for one die four rounds. So you rolled a fifteen. So I'm gonna roll here. Just, I mean, these pillars, they're pillars, right? They're just pillars, that's all. Just pillars. Just pillars. Just pillars. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. So both of them, like, the, the pillars start freaking out and, like, swinging around. Like, you hear a noise coming from somewhere deep, deep, deep beneath the floor. But these things are definitely swinging out randomly. You're still over there by the door. And, like, they come within, like, like three feet of you guys, like, whoa, just trying to swat you with their, with their, with their you know, bodies and such. Uh, they swing around. They are blinded for one die three rounds as they are wildly swing about just trying to hit anything in their in their range so right now they're kind of like if you if you go out there they don't get they won't get like a proper hit roll because they can't see but um yeah they're they're definitely trying to swing around and get at you guys i'd love to loose some arrows into the eyeballs while they're doing that um yeah let's just go ahead and roll some initiative at this point and uh just see how we do um 14 to be the dealer so Okay, um, uh, what'd you get, uh, Cho, Cho Jawara, what'd you get? 18. 18. Okay, uh, Fritha and the Queen. Seven. Okay, uh, to Martha. Three. Okay, wigs. 13. Okay, uh, Brank. Who? Who for Brank. Okay, and Anatol, J.I.C. I got the most wasted natural 20 <laughs> to ever have been rolled. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, for two more rounds, these things are going to swing around blindly as they will not be able to see. Um, it is Anatol. Uh, what are you going to do on 20 with your... Um, I am going to position myself on the backside of Tia Martha's new shield just because I think it's the, probably the safest place to be. Cool. And I'll just hang out there. All right, you were hanging out on the back of the shield. There you go. Um, it is, um, I'm sorry, I keep killing your pronunciation of your character's name. It is Kojiwara. Um, so Kojiwara sees uh, Queen Moonali uh, pulling out a longbow and, and there's spells happening. And he's like, uh, okay, <laughs> pull out a bow and follow suit and uh, try to take a shot at one of the, the eye okay, uh, pillars. The one on the right or the one on the left? Um, let's go with the one on the right. And start, and just to be a killjoy for a sec, I think wizards roll as a d16 on a longbow. Is that correct? Um, I thought that wizards had a uh, had a um, bow and arrow, but I'm gonna double check. Up, 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 up. Um, wizards, as it turns out, uh, nope, longbow, short sword, short bow, short sword, staff. Okay, cool. And dagger. You are good to go. So um, why don't you go ahead, uh, Kojiwara, take your shot. All right. Uh, no, I roll like a one. Not a net one, but a one. Yeah. Um, you, you fire an arrow, hits that tapestry on the far side, full of those with those worm things on it. 
Um, so uh, that was awesome. And uh, if it does not hit, but it's wigs, it's your turn. Um, <clears throat> uh, magic missile. Okay, make that roll. I, I, I still have toes. I have five fingers and toes left to spend on this spell. Um, it's... What'd you get? Oh no. Uh, six. <laughs> I lost the spell. Yeah, uh, you lost the spell. Um, so uh, that is not going to work. Now remember, you can always cast a spell one more time by doing the point of spell burn. Um, mm -hmm. The fight continues, and it is time for Freethia and the Queen. All right, I am loosing an arrow. Okay, uh, oh. um, arrow. It is an it is a modified twenty for five points of damage. Nice. So, um, are you firing at the one on the right or the one on the left? The one nearest to us. One on the right. Six points. Um, it is still five, up. Five points. Uh, five points, sorry. Uh, from, from deep below somewhere, you hear this like rumbling and roaring somewhere from like deep below the ground. But um, you do not, uh, you, know, you know, like you don't see, you know, like it, it's, it's, it's definitely hurt, but the fight continues. And uh, yeah, y'all, the, um, um, it is their turn. So they are going to, um, you know, they, they can't reach you guys. Because you guys are still standing in the door, right? So, like, they're, they, they swing at you as best they can, and uh, they can't, uh, like, they're hitting nothing. And uh, they can't see. They can't hit anything after swinging around the room. So the two eye socks were tracked back down into the floor and uh, disappeared. Now there's just two holes that are down there. Holes in the darkness. Hmm. So um, that is what you see. So at this point, we're kind of at, we're kind of outside of combat rounds at this point, as the two targets have kind of fled um, and disappeared back to where whence they came. Okay, um, so, so uh, if we're out of combat, I would love to uh, run up to one of those holes and shoot an arrow down the hole and see if anything happens. All right, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, you run up to one of those things and uh, fire an arrow. Take a shot. Um, are you going to fire down the right side hole, the same hole that the eye stuff came up you hit last time? Give me, your, give me a shot. Okay, so it's it's just darkness down there. It's what you can see. But go ahead and roll. Tell me what you get. I have a four. Yeah, you fire an arrow down there, and uh, nothing happens. But a, an instant later, that just that one eye stalk flies up out of there, and it's going to try to get you. It's only going to roll a d16 for its attack because um, it can't see. But here it goes. What? Um. So it's going to get a 15 plus AC 10. Uh, it's going to come over 18. So um, yeah, this eye stalk, you know, burst forth out of there and uh, is going to pound on you. And you take the low, low damage of six points. That's Ow. how many hit points I have. No. Yeah, so y'all see this eye stalk come over there and just wail on Freethia and uh, Queen Monale. Um and uh, this is, uh, this is like, we'll say, you know, this is the second round. This is the last round of those things being blinded. So everyone can act one time before we get back into combat again. So um, what are we going to do? Uh, Brank is going to just run up there as soon as that eye stock pops back up and just hew into this thing like it was a big tree. Okay. Give me that hue attack. All right. With my uh, mighty deed, I, I want to, uh, like, knock it over enough to where it can't retract back down into the ground. I got you. You're sure. Put a kick I, I got the deed, but I think I missed on the hit. Uh, it's going to be a 11. 11 is going to miss. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Um, everyone else has got one more, one, one can act one time this round before we roll initiative. And uh, actually, I think I'll just go back to the uh, other initiative, like the initiative we had just a minute ago. Just say this is like a, a weird round because things appeared there for a minute. So, um, uh, uh, Kojiwara, Wiggs, Tia Martha, what do y'all do? Uh, gonna run over there and lay on hands on. Okay, the, Give me a lay on hands check to bring I'll, the elf back. Put a hand on each yeah. forehead just to be safe. <laughs> uh, 
failed. I, uh, well, I failed, but I didn't trigger disapproval. So that's something, right? That's, yeah. How much you failed by? I rolled a total of six. So. All right, gotcha. Gotta, All right, so that. Sorry, I, I rushed that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that did not yeah, work to out. Take out the sword. You're supposed to run the sword over her body, and you know. <laughs> All right, uh, Wigs. What do you do in this down round? I cast a uh, word portal over the, over the, uh, yeah, over the hole. Yeah. yeah, give me a roll. Uh, it, does it have a horrifying material effect? Oh no! I lost that spell too. Did okay. you get a one or? Did you... Yeah, that would have been a slick move, but uh, that's not what you know. Um, oh, I didn't tell you my material effect for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Planar Rift. <laughs> wow. What happens on Planar Rift? Is that like 1% chance you? Um, you know, I don't remember exactly. It, it wasn't as bad as the other two, but. Uh, What's the number? Of well, let's see a number. Of I don't think I wrote that down. Uh, it's, a, it's an 11. Planar Rift. Casting the spell tears a jagged hole in the warp and weft of the multiverse is a cumulative 1% <laughs> chance that a horror from the outer dark steps through the rift. Okay, so it's number 11, and the spell didn't go off, so we don't have to worry about it this time. So, okay. But it's a cumulative um, 1%. Yes, yeah, it's a, it'll continuously. Kojiwara, you're our only hope. <laughs> Kojiwara, time for you to do something spectacular, my brother. Help me, I don't know if I'm really understanding what's going on in this, this scenario. Okay, so um, the two eye stalks, they were eye stalks, and they retreated down under there when they couldn't see and they couldn't hit anybody, okay? Um, Freethia ran over there and shot an arrow down one, which caused it to burst back up and try to hit them blindly and did it. And Freethia is now laying there, like, knocked out. So um, a couple people have run up and tried to attack this one eye stalk. Brank ran over and uh, tried to hit it. Um, uh, Wings tried to cast a spell. Tamartha ran over there and actually tried to um, lay on hands on Freethia. That didn't work out. Um, so you're still standing over there at the doorway with this thing about 20 feet away. Eye stalk is still burst through there. The other one has not come through yet, but that is what you see. And Anatol is just watching this whole thing. Anatol is uh, on the inside of the shield, pretty much just watching, you know. So are, are we trying to trying to? Save uh, Freethia. You're doing whatever you want to do. Freethia could use some saving. I'll put it that way. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, unless you have a healing spell, we're already at the roll the body point because I could, I I only have one yeah, round. Yeah, I don't I don't have anything yeah. there. Okay, yeah. so do we still see this the the thing that knocked him knocked her down? Oh yeah, yeah only one popping up right now, but yeah, it's still up there, and uh, you know. All right. Um, I'll I'll try to cast uh, f uh, flaming hands at it. Okay, I want to see you do it. All right, it would be a fourteen. That's a, that's an effect. That's a die die six damage, I think. Okay. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, look at that. Forty two. Flaming hands, you got a 16. Uh, yeah, that's one blast of fire, there's one die six damage, so roll me that up. All right, it does three points of damage. Okay, um, again, you hear, you know, blast of flame hits that one eye stalk, and once again, you hear this like roaring from underneath. But, um, uh, but in the meantime, um, you know, uh, fight continues, and uh, so we're back into regular initiative rounds at this point. So um, at this point, if everyone's gone, um, we're going to go to the top of the order. And it's uh, weirdly enough, it's Kojiwara again. So um, you can actually go ahead and uh, go again this round. All right. Um, I'll just be a one trick pony. I'll try that again. <laughs> hey, if it's a good trick, do it up. Oh, it's better. 19. Cool. 1d6 plus caster level. Okay. All right, do it up. That will be six points of damage. Six points. All right, it is still up, but it's definitely getting charred and hurt at this point. 
um, but it is still alive and in this fight. Um, it is wigs, and then the creature goes. Okay. Right, um, are are both of the stalks like out of their holes? Only the one stalk is out of its hole. The other one has not yet made an appearance again. Um, and Freethia needs her body rolled. Is that correct? I think. Yeah, you don't have to do that until after the after the battle, but um. Uh, you can, yeah, uh, you can do that. Now, if you want to, I know you've lost a lot of spells, but remember, you can always burn a point of spell burn and cast it one more time. Yeah, um, I'm going to burn, uh, I'll spell burn off my agility um, okay. and try to cast Ward Portal again. On the other one? Gotcha. All right, I want to see you do it. Uh, 15 is a let's see what we got uh portal, right. portal is held in place for two to six times ten minutes all right i hate to be this way okay but at this point the uh because there's there's no actually there's just a hole there there's no actual portal to shut um what you need at, at the minimum you need is a 20 portal completely disappears um so you can burn some luck points on that or it's not going to really have any effect um, will you tell me how much luck I need to burn? You got a 15? Uh, yeah. You got to burn three. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'll burn, I'll burn three. Three? I mean, okay. it won't. I'll, I'll burn, burn five. five. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, so you go over there and that, that one, that one hole completely disappears. That's awesome. That's a good move. Um, and it will be gone for, look up, um, um, I just lost the page. Um, uh, between rounds, look and see how, what a 20 gets, how many minutes it goes away for. So we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, so, uh, the other eyes talk, <laughs> it's their turn. So yeah, you hear like where, um, where Wigs closed off the one portal, you'll hear, wow, <laughs> as this thing tries to get out and fails. I have a um, question. Other was yes. bashing its eyeball hard going th going up thinking that there was a portal a, a hole there when there's not would that do any damage to it yeah i'll give it a couple of points of damage roll me a die six damage that one wigs this thing tries to burst through um you know uh five points of damage nice nice okay um yeah. and then the other one is going to whip around and it's actually going to try to hit uh uh, Brank, because Brank is in range. Uh oh. So here comes Jack. Sup, Brank? Yeah, it's going to get you with that. Um, you are going to take the low, low damage of 1d8. Um, Brank takes, hold on, I kept dropping my die there. Uh, you take five points of damage from the eye stock bashing you. Ouch. Yeah, that wasn't great. That's all right, though. Um, the other one is trapped, and it can't attack anybody. Um, so it's Tia Martha. And then, um, how did I skip? Sorry, it's actually Tia Martha was supposed to go first. I don't know how I skipped you. My bad. Tia Martha, you can go now. OK. So I, I checked it. It says it's in the first level, I can heal the round that the person is down or the next round, and they'll be OK. So I can try again, right? Is that can what I it says? Yes. It says. First level, uh, let's see. This character has, let's see, if if he is healed in the round, he's reduced to zero points, or the next round, he's healed per the result on the lay on hands check. All right, uh, you got one more round to bring Freethia back. Let's see you do it. I rolled a three. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. We did everything we could. Oh, and you did everything approval too. And it's disapproval. Yeah, Justicia oh, really yeah, does not want to see this happen. And we've got the Justicia disapproval. Nice custom dun, dun, disapproval table. Dun. All right, that's a. You know, I, I love that every god should have their own disapproval table. Uh, so I appreciate this, but I don't have those tables in front of me. So I just got to go buy it. So roll 3d4 and uh, tell me what you get. Oh, man, this is going to hurt, I bet. And you pick up another point of disapproval. I remember like three hours ago when I was like, can I use the things in the annual? <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Wait, minus my luck modifier, right? Yep. Five. 
The cleric is given an object lesson in humility. Justicia names one of the cleric's companions. The cleric cannot refuse a request or direction from that individual for two hours. However, if that compatriot does not show wisdom or mercy in commanding the cleric, Justicia reverses their roles for 10 minutes. Okay. Does that person know who they were? One, two, three. There's only four of y'all left, so I'm gonna roll. One, two. Okay, it's Brank. <laughs> so, I have a cleric now. <laughs> get ready to be shoveling some ore. Yeah, All right, so um, hey, speaking of which, uh, yeah, Brank, it's your turn right now, man. What are you gonna do? All right, so I'm going to continue chopping at the tree. Um, over my shoulder, I'm gonna call to uh, Tia Martha, heal me. <laughs> so for my um, for my deed, I'm gonna try to hit this thing like right in the pupil. Um, gotcha. Hopefully keep it blinded. Um, I didn't get the deed, but I got a 19. Give me some damage. Uh, tw uh, 21 total. So. Okay. So, um, oh, and this is with that Ultimac. I don't know if that's got any special properties. Well, you kill it with one shot, so maybe. No. It, edit, it edits the hell out of it. Uh, nine, <laughs> nine points. <laughs> It's been cut from the entire manuscript. Uh, yeah, you uh, you slash this thing in half. Shot! It falls down there. You hear a huge rumbling from down beneath, but that is all you hear. So um, let's. It's actually we're we're actually a little bit over time. So let's do one more thing. Let us, um, you know, the one eye stalk is stuck down there. The one has been killed. Let us roll the body and see if Freethia can come back. Freethia, one luck check, my bud. Failed. No. Oh, oh, so I and love Freethia. The king of Elfland and Queen Moon Ali has returned to take her rightful throne. <laughs> Going back to the great, you know, you know, maybe that's why you were dreaming up in this chamber. Maybe that was your destiny to come here and uh, return to whatever. Well, hey, that was all, like I, I love that character so much. I'm sorry to see you go. Um, but we'll go ahead and stop here for now. We will pick up here one week from tonight. Um, hey, how's a, how about a big uh, big hand for uh, for Will showing up and uh, playing Brank for us today? Hey, Thank thanks, you for showing up. thanks for letting me play with you guys. <laughs> thanks for being a special fun. guest. And uh, for all y'all watching, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And, uh, you know, the, the one who watches from below is still watching. So come back uh, next weekend, 6 p.m. Sunday, Atlanta time. We'd love to have you join us again. For the continuation of The One Who Watches From Below, I've been Judge Brendan for Blades Against Bandwidth. Thank you very much. Um, Alex, play us out. Bye.